Booster. Go. Retro. Go. Vital. We're go flying. Guidance. Guidance, go. Launch control, this is Houston. We are go for launch. I feel the need. The need for speed. You could ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Join us or die. And welcome to Mark Groupie Outdoors, the podcast, the moment you've all been waiting for, the Drunk Hunter Podcast, which Ryer informed me, I see, I thought I was supposed to be totally lit when I did this, but he told me that, no, really all I had to be doing was having a, having a drink in front of me. So we do officially have a drink in front of her. I got my guest, honored guest, Charles Chuck E. Cheese Whitwam. Cheers. And our friend Johnny Walker. So the three of us will be here, four of us counting the millennial. Say hey, millennial. Howdy, everybody. Black and label. Black label. Yep. And uh, we're going to hit your favorite outdoor discussions here. So we're don't here. forget about Whitney Houston. Don't forget about Whitney Houston there. Oh, she's here. There she is. She's she's, she's there. actually dead. She's here. She's she, with she's, us. She's with us. <clears throat> she's with us. So, uh, uh, to all of you in California and beyond listening, chime in, tell us what you think of this. Rippin', can we hear from you? <laughs> Modesto, <laughs> Turlock, <laughs> Delhi, down in Fresno, Fresno, <laughs> Manteco, we haven't heard from you. Lathrop, chime in. Let us know how you're feeling. Lodi, react to me. You Sacramento. Know this, isn't, this isn't live, Mark. Nobody can call us right now. I was, oh. I was wondering if he well, knew that or if this was. Well, this is all just fun. So it's just fun. It's just, it's just, it's just fun. No, but they, some people but, may debate that but, fact. But, but all these people can react. All, they the, can. All, all these people can react. They they can you know they can thumb it out and say, "Oh, Mark, you're funny as heck." I mean, we could have Ryer call in. We could have Ryer call in. Different voices. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe we could. Yeah, we uh, could. We could do something off that. With that. Yeah, I maybe, maybe there's some opportunity. You know what we do need to have Ryer do is I see a glass here and a glass there, and we have. We do have some whiskey left, but we have no ice. Boy, fetch us some ice before we get started. We'll we'll talk. We'll talk while you fetch us Look some ice. The face he's like. I know he's doing I'm the millennial. Gonna, he's doing the millennial pout thing. I'm gonna stab just everybody. Go. Honest, honestly, I'm so triggered right now that just you would make go. that you would think that I am your errand boy, yeah, and you I are, can just you, you I'll just our fetch boy. you ice. You will like it's the 1800s. It is. You will page yeah. boy, page boy. Yeah. Fetch me some ice, peel me a grape. What happens if I don't fetch you the ice, Mark? Well, then I'm not going to honor you with drinking on camera. Silence. Well, <laughs> good news is you've been drinking before the camera. I've been so drinking before the camera, but... but the results content, may still hold. It, it is about content, right? That was a big uh, topic content, of discussion. I mean, we've been talking, all, we've been yeah. talking all night about content, <clears throat> and now to get extra content, you know... You know, ice loo, is the content loose, in our glass. I, loose tongues will mm. help with that content, and ice will help with loose tongues. <clears throat> but it won't pour, Captain. Captain, she can't take any more. The dilithium crystals. <laughs> the audio for the no, first two minutes the, has been horrendous. Mark's the, just yelling. The, those are ice, I apologize for those anything. Those are ice crystals that are supposed to be there, but they're not. We don't have dilithium crystals or ice crystals. That, oh, Ryer hates noise. That's it. I'm just I, looking at I, his face. If, this if, is if, the I start, if I start making noise, I know he'll go get ice. <laughs> Except, <laughs> Look at the eyeball. Just the glares. God, it's almost like my wife. He's going, Amazing. I hate that noise, but I just do not want to do what he says. That's just going through his little pea brain, little millennial pea brain right now. And I've called him a millennial pea brain. <laughs> It's funny because I have control of the microphones and I've muted Mark. He can no longer say anything. <laughs> See, who has the power now, Mark? Uh, no, oh, I do. Oh, 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 got it. 
You've both been cut off. That was quick thinking. They can still hear me through your microphone over there. Well, figure out a topic of discussion while I go fetch okay. the ice. Why, why, while our, our boy fetches it's the still ice. still rolling while you do this? Yeah. So it, yeah, it doesn't stop. Yeah, Do, it never stops. He doesn't need to be here. We could do this totally without him. Interesting. I would, interesting. <laughs> nah, I would, nah, I would nah, like nah, for, nah, I would nah. like for I would like, I would like to see that. On my own millennial huffed up and my, my beard with food in it. Well, where else am I supposed to keep the food, Mark? <laughs> you did kind of have a lot of My food. skinny the, jeans don't the, have big the enough poor pockets. Little, the poor little chipmunks need to come and feed. Where else would the chipmunks come and feed if I didn't store food for them in my woolly beard? Uh, look at him getting, look, he's getting like a... a he did, look at all these years, he doesn't know where the glasses are. Yeah. Hashtag dumbass. It has to be kind of a big glass. There, there's a glass right below you that I've been using for ice all night long. Mm. Could have used that one. Uh, oh, lovely. Working? No, you've not been yeah, working. Right, you've been right. drinking with us, and that's the problem. You can't perform. Lovely. You can't perform with alcohol in your system, whereas Charles and I can perform. It's like having a five-year-old kid again when he would go it, it, it get beer from the fridge. Once they learn that, you're like, "Gosh, this is awesome!" Oh, no, kid. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really do. This much ice. Uh, can you take some of this ice back? I don't think I needed this much ice. I'm sure you can find something to do can, with can it. You, can, you re, can, you re, can you can you can you can you can you return this much ice, please? No returns. No, no returns. exchanges. No refunds. No returns. Okay. So what are we over this Johnny Walker Black? What are we discussing? Well, let's uh, jump in since we're up here scouting for pigs and learning some new country. The <laughs> two of us together. Uh, let's talk about pig hunting. Let's do it. Um, cause I've been getting a number of, uh, messages and just different threads on Facebook posts and stuff like that about, you know, I, you know, want to go after some pigs right now, you know, what, you know, doing it now versus doing it later and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, we can talk, let's, let's, uh, jump in and talk about the difference of hunting them now and, and, and hunting them later. I think the first big obvious one in in this year with california is water mm. and the, obviously they can it's driving around as you can see they can find water wherever they want water and green feed is yeah. wherever so they do not they do not have to uh be move more than three feet they, they do not have to move in, they do not have to move anywhere so getting uh any current knowledge you can and and we're lucky with that because we have cowboys riding around the ranch and they give us uh, current information but being able to read that current information in the ground what you know what ground is freshly tilled up what's yeah. been slightly rained on what's been more rained on um you know takes takes a little bit of knowledge so um what about uh tell me your experiences with noise and locating pigs by noise mm. by sound have, have oh. you uh whether that's <clears throat> Yeah, feeding sounds or squealing sounds or or, or, or what? Uh, what are your experiences there? Okay, so unless you're super close to them, the only pig sounds you're going to hear are, are kind of the, the quarreling sounds that they make when they're right. betting or fighting or whatever. Else. Right. Unless you're super and that, close. And that, carry, right? and that carries away. You can hear them yeah. several hundred yards away fighting. Definitely, yeah. Um, if you're super close, you know, which has happened, but it's kind of like, a needle in the haystack thing. You can hear that low grunt. Exactly. And you picked that. You picked that up back to last time when yeah. you when you're up here hunting. You go. Yeah. God, I think I just heard that yeah. that low frequency grunt of, of something. And sure enough, they were right there. Yep. I I definitely if I for whatever reason feel like I'm close to pigs or just at random, I I cut my ears all the time. Mm -hmm. I do it all and, the time yep, when, I'm, sure. when I'm hunting. And um, it certainly helps. I I'm. Mo mostly do that in the summer and fall because you can hear them <laughs> exactly either yeah, crunching you can, or walking or, or walking. something yeah. and, and it really it really really works um you know gives you a little bit of, a, of an advantage for sure but um yeah so in the morning they're moving and they're going to go to bed but usually if, if it's a group when they go to bed there's going to be some kind of quarreling or fighting as they're 
jockeying yeah. for a position. So sometimes and you only hear maybe one. Yeah, right. Like just you just hear whee! kind of a right. thing. But you now know they're they're right there somewhere. So um, usually if you stay close to them, you'll hear a few more noises throughout in the next right. few hours if, if you know where they are. Um, but what I'll do is is actually go for scent. Try and mm -hmm. get down. Get down if, I, if I think I know where they are, then try and smell them, mm -hmm. which is cool because it's one of the few animals um, where we can rely on our sense of smell. Them and elk. And elk, yeah, exactly. Yeah. When they're running like a, like a buck, mm -hmm. you can certainly smell that. So um, it's cool to be able to do that though, right? Because we can't, usually we're just sight. And, yeah. Well, yeah. white tail deer, mule yeah. deer, antelope, turkeys, ducks, whatever. You're never able to use your nose. But yeah. uh, Pigs are certainly a th uh, right. a multi -sen uh, sensory uh, mm -hmm. hunting object. Yep. So, I guess that's my process with that. If I if I hear one, yeah, you know, is is, is usually that's usually what I'll do is attempt something like that. Um, as far as in the winter, you know, hunting in the right now where there's water everywhere and and green grass everywhere. Um, you, you can't target them at their food sources or water sources, right? But <clears throat> what I like about, what I really like about hunting in the winter is it's usually colder and say around 12 p.m., 2 p.m., mm -hmm. whatever, when the sun comes out, they like to come out. So that's something that you don't get. Right, in the summer In the, in the summer, yeah, sure. Um, so, hey, hey Ryer, will you go into my bathroom and jiggle my, my <laughs> toilet handle? I hear my toilet running, and if you just go jiggle that handle, it, it'll stop running, and it's kind of annoying me. That keen sense of, he's got some kind of concoction. What, is, what has he got here? That he's building here. Oh, because oh, it, 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 this annoys him. No, but, Imagine if you heard you know, that constantly while you're listening to Jim well, Rome show. M mostly because they know you're cringing. I'm going to bring in some coasters just for this. <laughs> I, I'm going to I'm going to ma actually make some coasters. Uh, yeah. My son's getting married, and we're going to go. Sorry. We're going to cut some four inch round soft pines. Yeah, and we're going to. Um, yeah, uh, and put their names on the back, and then uh, as people have these coasters at, at their tables, they can take them home as gifts. That's really nice, actually. Yeah, Pretty cool. That's idea. a really good idea. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah. yeah, so on on the pigs thing, I can't I can't tell you the number of number of times where and and Ryer, who's traipsing around with me with the camera, will attest to this. I'll just hear, and and you got to be listening for it. Maybe yeah. just here I'll say, I just wonder. You know, just one, and it's like, and and he can he can like see him attest to that. I go, God, I swear, I just heard a a, a little pig squeal, yeah. or something. And so you know, like you said, you know, stop and you know, listen. And all of a sudden, you know, if they're there and doing that and again, and then and then maybe you hear you know more to the fight or something when you're not walking. But it's important to to stop because if you're walking full force and and going along, you 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 can miss a lot. So if you think you're in a a, a, a spot where you think you might have heard something and it might be real low frequency grunting like Charles said or it could be a high frequency th thing um, stop and just pause don't move and just listen to that and then when you hear that sound uh, then a lot of times then you can home in on it move 100 or 200 yards closer get mm -hmm. that sound the sound again and let them make the mistake of making noise rather than you blundering into them and that to me in that uh, I found it here at least on our, our ranch from January to March that that'd be a real effective uh, effective thing and sometimes uh, um, um, yeah, when I get in that um, March and April and early May time. Sometimes, even though there's tons of pig sign and tons of pigs around, I can have a hard time finding them because there's again now the feed is really coming on. They really have to go nowhere. Here they right. graze on a thing called fillery. I don't know if you have that at uh, where, where you guide at uh, Lockwood Guide Service. Is that what it is? What? Lockwood. Yeah. What? 
guide service there. So you guys check that out uh, along with this stuff Charles has got going on. Lockwood Hunting Service. Lockwood Hunting yeah. Service. And um, uh, um, but w- when it, they get start getting on the fillery here, it's growing up and it's thick and dense. And these pigs literally have to go nowhere. They have to get up out of their bed. They get something to drink right where they're at. They have yep. something to graze. They really do not have to go anywhere. What, what is the what's fillery again? What is fillery exactly? is is just, it's a. I don't know if you ever did it. You when you were kids, but you'd uh, take these seed pods that were these long things. They're a bulb on one end, and then they poked out to a needle and you peeled them apart and they twisted into a corkscrew and they'll twist and they get into your socks. They, twi- but they yeah. twist up real tight. So that's fillery and it's got, it's, it's like higher than alfalfa and protein and they'll, really? they'll, they'll get, <clears throat> so I'll find the, I'll find these spots and I'll find the pig crap and every, everything, but I'll find these spots where the pigs have it grazed down and they'll be grazing on it just like the cows and they'll just be pounding it hard and so I'll find those spots and I'll, and I'll try to key on those spots. The problem is those spots are, can be everywhere around right. here. So you might have one here and there's one 300 yards over there and 50 yards over there. And I mean, they're, they're, yeah. it's literally everywhere around here. But fillery is a, is a big thing that they, from, from, from March on, well, from now on, but really from March on as, as the grass really starts growing, that they, they really start hitting. Hmm. So I think though to, to help people, if there's any help to be had for pig hunting, uh, for people in California, because if, if you own your own property or if you're going on guided hunts, um, you know, you kind of, you're doing your own thing. You know where the pigs are, mm-hmm. right? Um, guys who aren't doing that, they're hunting on public land. So what do they do? That's that's probably what most people want to know, right? Yeah, yeah. You're, like, what's you're, the opportunity? You're right because how many, because if you're if if you're buying the hunt, you don't have to know what to do. You have to ride right. into the seat next to the guide or be able to keep up with the guide and because you and know the he, property and, and then the guide knows it and, they, and and the guide puts you on it. Yeah. But on public property and and you can, you know, without giving away your spots, and you've yeah. you've been a very successful hunter on on, on public ground for pigs, which is there's only I don't talk about it anymore. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But, but maybe you can just talk about yeah. you know, talk about some definitely yeah. things that have worked for you. Yeah. Um, so back to properties and public public land. I find that every place I've ever hunted is completely individual to that piece of property. Mm-hmm. So what you're finding here and the yeah. patterns and and whatnot is 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 great, but a hundred miles away could be a completely different thing. Yeah. I it, 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 and especially for pigs for deer, you know, you'll see the same deer. They just mm-hmm. sort of keep circling mm-hmm. kind of, you know, um, you'll see the same deer all the time. Pigs, um, for the most part, once you pressure them, they're yeah. going to leave for a little bit. They'll come back later yeah. or whatever, but that depends on yeah. so many different variables and every piece of property with pigs it is a different variable, yeah. right? There's, there's so many different things. I, happen, I think so. pigs react more adversely to pressure than deer do. Oh yeah. I, I don't, I, I think Definitely. deer, deer are more likely to run to the other side of the hill. And if you don't show up yep. in, in the next half hour, but, but pigs yep. don't go and don't stop in there. They're more like elk. They're, they're, you know, yeah. maybe they're going to end up, you know, uh, a mile or so away and then change their habits. They'll come back, but they'll come back after dark yeah. or, or, or whatever, yeah. you know, it, uh, they're, very, I think that's why they're so such a successful animal is they're so adaptable. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll adapt to where you can drive literally 10 feet from them in your pickup truck when they've learned that you're not a threat. Mm-hmm. I mean, and really quickly, or they will learn to, <laughs> run as fast as they can when they hear or see anything from you 400 yards away Mm -hmm. and they will learn it really quickly. A hundred percent. So back to public. That's probably what most people's options are. Where they, if they want to learn anything, right. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) what I've found is that it's, it's, 
it's just getting outside and getting after them. Mm-hmm. And you are, you just have to get lucky. You, you have to, I was thinking about it earlier, you know, for maybe somebody who is just getting into hunting and say you do the same thing five times with no results. That's what hunting is. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a hunt. Generally I do something 10 times, but because I've been doing it all my life, I've done it, you know, whatever, say I've done it a million times. I know that I'm working with a 10% yeah. opportunity rate, not success rate, but right. say opportunity rate. Right. Right. So you have to have kind of faith in the process. Mm-hmm. I think that gets a lot of people down. So, yeah. but with, with public land, um, once I find sign, that's one thing, but mo- most of that sign is going to be happening at night. So it's like, great, find all the sign you want, but mm-hmm. there's no pigs in sight. Where'd they go? You right. Know? So you have to find where they're betting. Right. And generally, um, it means you have to leave like in the morning, you've got to leave really, really early mm-hmm. and try and catch them at their betting spot. Right. Somehow. That's that's the the biggest thing I mean, for probably most people that are listening that want to learn pig hunting you know without going on guided trips or if they don't have private land that would be the biggest thing is um don't be discouraged find those two things find sign and find their bedding areas and you know leave at 3 a.m and um slowly sneak in and listen so yeah. back to listening because that that was a huge huge thing with me on public land is me not making sound and me listening for sound and then I'm already aware that this is a bedding area. So I'm aware of that area because mm-hmm. I've been there a bunch of times. Um, so now I know what they're doing. I'm like, Ooh, there, there's pigs here. Now I know what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. Cause they're going to go bed here. Yeah. So make your plan, you know, accordingly like that. Um, I mean, but pigs aren't, they like, I, I guess the, the advice you could give with deer or elk or whatever would be different. Pigs are really different species they're complete they can either be the easiest thing to hunt in the world yeah or not yep and a lot of people with if you're pub, that's the funny part public land pig hunting in california some people consider the hardest thing to do yeah I, I there think, isn't a lot of them on public land there right. isn't a lot of public land right right and um it, no yeah. the success rate is probably worse than going for an archery uh um elk hunting in uh in idaho <laughs> oh, I, if you're asking my experience, it certainly is. Yeah. I mean, public archery hunting in Idaho has been a hundred percent opportunity rate mm-hmm. for, for one right. and, and 50% success. So that's been great. Yeah. You know, um, certainly big, big difference. Yeah. Now, yeah. now those of you that are lucky and I, I know a couple people that, have spots that I, I won't, I would never betray them, but they've got these spots and they've got some honey holes and they are successful constantly time after time after time. A lot of times with, I don't want to say very little effort, but, but, uh, you know, with, a just a modicum of experience, but they found these spots. There are, there are those spots out there that, uh, that uh, if, if you can, but you know it's not going to fall in your lap. You got to go. You're out, talking you, about pigs. Yeah, you pigs. Gotta, you yeah. got to get out you know, and, and find those spots. But there are some public land spots where, where it, the, the the hunting the hunting is pretty darn good. But you're you know you, you're going to have to. And, and the one guy I know in particular who does it and gets them pretty routinely, and I don't think he has to work terribly hard his work that he had to do terribly hard was to find the location in the first place. That's the, that's the big, yeah, and, that's you the, know, that's the biggest and, thing. And then, and then he's, he's home that he's home that down. And now he's, he's successful almost all the time, you mm-hmm. know, in a couple of days on public land, which is yep. pretty rare for California. Yep. And, but if you think about it, I don't think most people don't have that much time to hunt anyway. No. So how much are they really hunting public land? The guys who go in and try and, they say there's no pigs. Yeah, I, I've yeah. been there, believe me. I, I've been there, but the thing with pigs, this was the big difference. So let's say I was going in and public public land hunting deer, and I wasn't seeing any deer. The difference is I would go in and see sign all the time because pigs make so much sign. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it 
boggled me. I'm like, okay, they're, I'm seeing what they're doing mm -hmm. and it's everywhere. Yeah. It's all over the place. Right. Between, between their poop and their rooting and right. their rubbing on trees and their every, yeah. I mean, another three dimensional thing that they do is it's, it, it is everywhere when they are in a spot. So that's what made me so motivated and, and so crazy to figure this out. Cause mm -hmm. I was like, I, why aren't I seeing a pig? Like I can go see deer on public land. I'm going to find deer. Right. You know, like at least see them. Mm -hmm. Right. But seeing a pig. But you see their sign everywhere. It's yeah. like it, it's like they're ghosts, right? Um, so that yeah. that was the big difference with me is is relying on the on the sign, or you know, looking at the sign and just asking yourself, what's going on? What am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's they're nocturnal. I mean, that's really what it is. Yeah. But they got to be somewhere. Yeah, yeah, you know? they are, and and they are. You know, if you haven't done it before. They're laying down, they're laying down under a manzanita or a low hanging oak, or they've got a spot dished out and maybe all that stick. It, it, I mean, every once in a while I've seen them propped up pretty well. A lot of times though, that area that they've got dished out is there, they're below, almost below ground level. And it's just maybe the top of their back or their ears or, or something like that, that, that you're seeing. So, you know, you, you, and I've, I've walked up five yards from knowing that they were bedded in something, you know, and couldn't, couldn't pick those suckers out because really they're, well. they're just buried in, they're yeah. just buried in there. And, and, uh, so they actually well, will bury themselves. Yeah. They'll, they, they'll, they, they do bury themselves they get inside in of trees, inside of the, yeah. the uh, um, cutouts of trees. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so when you're finding the, 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 typically when I've seen them bedded, is in thick areas, heavy areas, you know, there, there's, the, the visibility is not good. So when you're look, when you, when you're prowling around looking for them on, on public land, to me, if I was looking for them and I'll, well, throw this caveat out there, I have not hunted them on public ground, but I've hunted them a lot on private ground just yeah. in, and I've hunted them in open ground and tight ground. They are in brushy stuff and they are tucked into stuff. And it might be rocks, it might be blown over trees, or whatever, but they are tucked into stuff. So, um, glassing for them bedded down is pretty darn tough. Every once in a while, you get lucky and, and, and spot something, but man, those suckers are buried in there. Yeah. And uh, so, when it when it comes time, like Charles said, you you found the sign, you found the rooting, you found their turds, you found them rubbing on trees. Yeah. All right, so they're here somewhere. Now you got to go find that, and typically it's going to be in a uh, a, a steepish and or brushiest b a spot f uh, uh, where they, where they feel secure and hiding and, and getting out on you. Mm -hmm. So and not to so you've never hunted on public land, never. Oh, okay. So and that's and it's not I, you know your land. You've spent a ton of time here. If you've spent the same amount of time on public land mm -hmm. in one area where there's pigs, so you got to be mm -hmm. pigs there. Mm -hmm. um, you would be, you would know it just as well and you'd be able sure. to kill pigs the same way. So it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's just the private land thing. Well, you live there or you spend a bunch of time there. So you learn all that. But, but yeah. as, as you can see, if you spent some time here uh, on the 8,600 acres we got here, all 8,600 acres isn't created equal. Right. You, you can, <laughs> you, even though it's yeah. quote unquote private mm -hmm. land, yeah. you can go and jerk off on, on a whole bunch of unproductive land or you can find where they've been, where the fresh sign is, right. where they like to bed. And there and, are and, reasons for there, 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 there are, there are reasons and it's, and it is, it, it is repeatable and, and they, and they do like certain areas for certain reasons. So, um, you know, the key for you guys out there, um, like I say, I'm, I'm speaking just from hunting on private land, but it's, is, 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 is finding, finding those, those, those spots, you know, and, and turning away the, the, the bad, you know, skip, you know, skipping by the bad areas and, and finding what's good. I've hunted on a lot of private land where, um, you know, my first couple times hunting it. I just, I didn't, I felt like it was useless. Mm -hmm. And then now it's become my favorite. Yeah. It's just all about learning that, you know, the area and it takes, 
a lot of time and effort. Yeah. It really, really does. It takes a ton of time. It's like 30 days, spend 30 days there. Yeah. You know, but then that changes year to year as well. Every, yeah, it changes sure. with so many different, you know, uh, water changes levels. With the conditions or, and, yeah, and, the food. and your yeah. knowledge. And, yeah. yeah. Well, and when we first bought the ranch here in, in the late, uh, uh, late 70s, there was no pigs on it. And they and they just sh- they just started showing up, and uh, the, our ranch guys started saying, "Yeah, I'm seeing something. It looks like you know they're not ca- calf tracks. It looks like pig tracks." And and uh, hmm. um, but there weren't enough to be <clears throat> wasn't enough to be huntable. It was you know they were here and then not here, right. and then all of a sudden you know there was a group here, but there's one small group on 8,600 acres, and you know that's that's a, that's akin to the maybe the density or you know on on, pri- on private you know on public land you know mm-hmm. or you know a, a, a few groups every you know 10,000 acres or something like right. that so you know to 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 your point like I feel like this is pointless for a long time I felt you know felt it was pointless I knew they're here I, I could see something but but for a long time I felt felt it was pointless but but then uh, they started doing better here and I started making more of a science out of it. Mm-hmm. You gotta, if, if you're hunting pigs, you just gotta have fun with it because you're probably not going to, um, I ha- it, I don't know what it took me, maybe two years or something to even see a pig. Mm-hmm. And this was hunting a lot. There you go, people. And, and you're posting and you, yeah. I went out and I didn't see anything. That one time you went hunting out Charles, yeah. who who here, he's he's a guy. We've been talking about this, and we both grew up hunting. You know, at eight, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, shooting BB guns shooting all, all the time and everything. You know, uh, a world of experience and going out for days and days and days and days and days and years and not seeing anything. So when you guys uh, make that post where uh, California pig hunting sucks, I went out and I didn't see anything. All I saw was garbage and this and that. It is not easy and is not going to fall in your lap. And I'm not saying it doesn't suck, <laughs> <laughs> but um, every once in a while you'll have a day where where it, it definitely doesn't suck. Yeah, you know, for sure. Um, but it, it took me. I don't. I don't really know what I was doing. I've discussed it before. I don't know what I was doing differently, but um, it took me two seasons of of uh, hunting on public land before I finally saw a pig. And when I saw that pig, it was in the middle of the day, I was eating an apple, and I heard something underneath of me in the manzanita brush. Mm. And I had, it didn't even cross my mind that it was a pig because <laughs> it was so strange. I was like, How, what's right there? What's down there? Mm-hmm. I and mean, it was like five yards away or 10 yards away or something. And um, it was making some strange noises. But I wasn't, you know, now when I think about it, maybe... If I heard it, when I had heard it then, I was like, I don't know what that sound is. Mm-hmm. I didn't recognize it as a pig sound, but I didn't really know what pig sounds were. Mm-hmm. I'd heard, I think a couple of days before, it was the closest I had got, I actually set up a tree stand and I'd heard a bunch of squealing and stuff. And I was like, oh man, this is all like mm-hmm. really close to pigs. Um, but I heard some kind of a sound, grinding sound or something going on. I didn't pick up my bow or anything. I was eating an apple. Didn't think it was a pig. And I could tell something was moving because I could, I could hear it. It was so thick. And then in an opening, I see a pig cross and I was like, Oh my gosh, there's a freaking pig right there. Dude, I just, so I pick up my bow. Right. And I'm, and I look at another opening and I'm like the pig's going to cross in this opening and it did, but it was, it was so fast and it was like 55 yards away at that point. And I was just, I was so beat down. I'm like, I was just sitting and eating an apple, eating my lunch 10 yards away from a pig for probably 15 minutes. <laughs> And then the thing finally decided to get up and leave, mm-hmm. right? And it was just like, what are the chances of that? And it was so heartbreaking. But, you know, I just kept going and that just made me crazier. I'm like, what the heck? You know, hmm. is that what these things are doing? Are they, like, so it brought me back Have to I thinking been... of like, of hunting rabbits. So I'm like, are they like hunting rabbits? Because hunting rabbits in Michigan, they'll wait till you step on them before they move, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, so I just started like, you know, thinking, what are they doing? Are they just hiding mm-hmm. all the time? Are they close to you and they just let you walk by them or mm-hmm. whatnot? You know, 
And that's not really the case, but sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. Sometimes Pig, they do, though. The, yeah. our, our cowboy today sent me some stuff, and I, I sent you the footage uh, off his iPhone. You know, he rode up onto him on his yeah. horse, and he got off and he was standing on the ground. And, and so, sometimes they let you do the damnedest, damnedest yeah. things to him, and, and sometimes they blow out of there over completely nothing. But... Uh, there's a, there's a lot of times I've rode by them, walked by them, you know, and they, you know, and I've, you know, I've just pretended like I haven't seen them or stuff, and you know, yeah. and, and they're and they're they're ha they're they're happy to you know happy to lay there. But uh, one thing different than deer, generally on a deer, if I drive by a deer and he's standing there thirty yards off the road, and I was to drive down a couple hundred yards around and turn around and come back. There's a good chance he might just still be stand, standing there in the same place. A pig generally, if you if I if I drive by him, he's alert and he's off. He he he's, mm -hmm. he, he's generally not there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wonder what this like if you were to somehow you know know the statistics and all, which you you couldn't. But success rates as far as opportunity and success rates mm -hmm. as far as seeing and then. Because I feel like once you see a pig, your success rate goes is it, it, it really really raises. Certainly, if you see a deer, doesn't Man, necessarily that doesn't mean your success rate right, is gonna right. is gonna raise at all. You because you, that's because right. they're hearing and their sight, they're all that is so much yeah. higher. You, you, you spot a pig at two hundred yards that has not seen you. Yeah, your rate of success is ten times as high as spotting a deer at two hundred yards that hasn't seen you. Right. You, oh yeah. By far. Yeah. So maybe it's, you know, it's it's just the way we're talking about it as far as hunting deer and hunting pigs. You're going to see more deer, but still, what's the success rate on killing deer? Mm -hmm. um, but enough people probably aren't really hunting pigs that much. They're not putting in the same amount of time because they're just like, we're just not seeing them. Mm -hmm. But that's not really the name of the game with the pigs. It's about just being persistent and just keep going and going and going and you'll you'll eventually get them. Yeah. But it's probably going to even out to how many deer do you get a year, sure. especially if you're hunting public land, and how many pigs. If you put in the exact same amount of time, it might be the same. Yeah, you know, yeah, it might be. Know. But one thing you mentioned for sure is, is you got to you got to enjoy it. Oh. Yeah, the, 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 the pig. <laughs> yeah, you know, enjoy the process. Enjoy the walking in the hills. You know, in, in, in enjoy the days you didn't get anything, and you know, enjoy the, uh, the 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 time out there. Enjoy the time you spotted them, and you know, and first time, holy cow, I was within range of uh, of, of pigs, and just yeah. you know, just enjoy that process because uh, there's 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 a lot of fun in that. Whatever yeah. whatever you're doing, whether that's pigs, deer, elk, uh, it's the only way. Yeah, or I, or I don't think you can continue. No, I mean it's uh, not like hunting. I like to harvest my own meat and uh, yeah. put, and that's great. I love harvesting my Sounded own like meat. Sounded like Sean Connery like there. It tells me goose stepping morons such as yourself should try reading books instead of burning them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're pretty good, huh? I suddenly remembered my Solomon. <laughs> that my armies be the rocks <laughs> and the trees. <laughs> that was great. Last crusade, boom. Here. Good one, good one. Yeah, good one. Good one. Oh, but we both funny. got a quote from the same movie. Yeah. <laughs> now, can you both continue your regular conversation in that accent? That is the question. Gosh. <laughs> so we can try that. Wild pigs, hard as they are, do they bury them in a sarcophagus? <laughs> we named the dog Indiana. <laughs> Henry Jones Jr. <laughs> Oh, that's great! Good, good knowledge. Good knowledge. <laughs> I salute you on that. Uh, yeah, he's good stuff. That's my great movies. Yeah. Movies. Did our good man. did our segment ever? I don't know if this ever made it into an episode. You, you remember we did that whole segment where where you were doing a John Connery you were impression. Be the other guy. Uh, oh. We, I'm trying to remember where we did uh, what, that. What we did. We, we we were sitting bored waiting for. Pigs, pigs and you you oh, yeah, we're gonna do this whole scene no I'm we, we do it we, 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 no it, it was it was off of hunt red, red october when i when i do you see that i arranged him give me a ping vasily 
One ping only, please. Absolutely. <laughs> That's such a good movie, too. Yeah. Give me a yeah. ping, Vasily. Yeah. One ping only, please. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, That's a great movie. That is a great movie. They made a porn movie, The Hunt for Pink October. Hmm. I don't think I've watched that one. I didn't either, but it's a great name. You sure? You Saving Ryan's it. Privates, another good one. <laughs> Look how it went to that. How did this? I don't. I have, I have nothing. How to did say. this go to porn? Yeah, where did that? God, Sean. It's almost. Money. It's almost like Sean. the producer knew that at some point this conversation would yeah. deteriorate yeah. into yeah. hysterics. You baited him right into that. They call me the master baiter. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Anyways, pigs. As a as a redheaded millennial, that's what I would expect from you. I'm only trying to give the people what they want, Mark. <laughs> I think you gave them more than that, but um, at least I didn't give them less. So we, um, I, I think uh, as far as launch it, launching people on there, uh, you know, w one thing I saw is uh, w when uh, um, you pay an electrician and he comes to your house and he fixes something in 30 seconds and charges you a hundred dollars. You're not paying them for that 30 seconds of work. You're paying them from all those years of experience. Yeah. You're paying for all that years of experience, education, trial and error, all the times that he's bumped his head, all the times he couldn't figure out what was going on. That's what you're that's what you're paying them for. And when you when you pay yeah. for a guide, you know, a lot of the, gosh, they charge so much and this and that and everything. Well, when it, you know, when you, when you break it down per day, say say it was, say it was Let's just round it to a thousand dollars a day, you know, and it's a, I mean, a thousand dollars for a hunt and it's a two dollars. So it's $500 a day. Okay. You've got your land expense. You've got your vehicle expense. You had to drive there. You had to spend your whole day, probably a pretty long day. Um, you've had all your work ahead of time here. You've seen all the grain fields we plant. I'm about to have to buy a thousand dollars worth of fertilizer to sprinkle on fields. Insurance, uh, insurance, um, all the stuff that we do. I mean, you and I are driving around today, you know, looking for sign, looking here, looking there. You know, spend. You know, yeah. The, you know, we're we're going to take two days of just trying to figure out where they are at. So when someone comes, that they have a good experience in a in a short amount of time. Yep. But it, it is. You are not see you know when when you're I, I feel when you're judging a pig hunt at that at, at a at a certain price and saying God it's just a nuisance animal it should be free or it should be a hundred dollars or it shouldn't yeah. be hardly anything you're not really taking into full appreciation no what 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 what, what goes in what goes into it especially on uh, you know on, on on private land there's a lot of lot of resource that goes into that sucker. Yeah, there's a ton. I, I I have this conversation a lot, but I just had this conversation with somebody who was, I mean, really the conversation was about um, going on a guided deer hunt. Um, and and this guy is in he's in really good shape, you know, and and you know he'll he'll put in the effort and all mm -hmm. that. And I basically told them, and this is a this could lead to other things, or whatever, but. There's a no way a plug for this, but I kind of do everything. I do guided stuff. I'm a member of Wilderness Unlimited, and I hunt public, public land. land. Sure, I like I like everything. Like I hunt. told him, I said, "Why don't you just join Wilderness Unlimited?" Because he hunts with me sometimes. I'm like, "Why would you go pay what was it, two thousand bucks or something? What was it for the deer? I don't know, but it was no, it was a thousand bucks for two days. That's what it was. Why would you go pay a thousand bucks for two days of hunting?" When you could join, you can join Wilderness Unlimited. You've hunted with me. Excellent. You, you know, the few properties that I, that I hunt that are really, really good. It was, it's like 2000 bucks a year, mm -hmm. like a year, meaning you can go hunt 35 days if you want yeah. to. And the, he starts and it's, and it's funny. Everybody has this kind of logic same or, thing or, like, or, yeah. well, but what about this? But what about, I'm like, we're just talking 2000. How much do you spend when you go? When I go hunt on public land, if I kill two two pigs a year on public land, I've spent a lot of money. Sure. I mean, unless I get really, really lucky, 
but I've spent a lot of money on fuel going back and forth, the food that I eat each night that I spend there, the time, time away, the time away from home, time not doing other yeah. stuff, opportunity to cost lost. And yeah. I, I spend a lot of money. So for somebody who pays for, you know, say a thousand bucks for a guided trip. Um, and the thing with, with wilderness unlimited, cause I know this guy, I'm like, you have a bunch of time to hunt. If you have a bunch of time to hunt, mm-hmm. this is what you should do. If you have a bunch of time to hunt. Um, but if you don't have a bunch of time to hunt and you want to do, say, a guided trip, say you have, you know, a week to hunt every year. That's it. You mm-hmm. get seven days in the hunt. But you want to come home, you want to have a wild game in your freezer. We better go on a guided hunt. Yep. That's, that Don't do Wilderness Unlimited. Don't do go hunting don't public land. Prep. You better go do your research and go on a guided hunt. A hundred percent. Mm-hmm. It, because it, that's going to be the least expensive, most efficient yeah. way to go. And I don't think people look at it that way. Yeah. They, they come up with a, I can go hunt out of state, or I can, like, you can go hunt out of state. I, can, I can go to Texas. I don't even know what you are talking. You're going to fly there. You're going to drive there. How are you going to get all the meat uh, back? I don't yeah, understand. I, I, you, I, yeah. When they say I do, I do, a, I do a Texas hunt for $650 and I'm going, yeah. I, 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 re- I, I really don't see it happening. Nobody states and, away. And, some, and a lot of it is n- not all pig hunts, not all $1,000 pig hunts, not all $1,500, $700, whatever pig hunts are created equal because there's different experiences, all of them. There, there are some excellent guides in California that you can book with. I'll plug him, DJ Peck. You can go pay your money to him, and he will put you on pigs right away yeah and you will kill if you want a three-hour hunt and, go and to him kill it and that's it you're gonna, th- kill him. you're gonna go out and yeah. you're gonna kill it you're gonna go out and kill your pig you'll pay your money i don't know what he, what, he, what he charges i'm sure it's somewhere between eight hundred and twelve hundred dollars and um and uh but you're gonna go out and you're gonna and you're gonna kill a pig so if your definition of a successful hunt is a dead pig right there is a is med- man to go to now if you want something different if you want well i like the lodging i like the ranch i like the walking around i love the beauty um i love the experience with the guides um i love the knowledge that i'm gaining i love not being a number you know so you know shot my animal i'm out of here um you know now now your options start to, to start to vary and your opportunities start start to vary. So you so you really Look. got to kind of to Charles Point. What 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 are you looking for out of this hunt? Yeah. Are you looking for a dead pig? Are you looking for cheap? Are you looking for um, uh, 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 an an experience that rivals a Rocky Mountain elk you know hunt trip experience? You know what what are you looking for? So. When, when when you're doing this, when you're trying to figure out what your money is going for, what your time is going for, your time is not free. When your time, what your your, your money is going for, what what, do, what are you looking for out of this? And mm-hmm. and and you've really got to answer those questions, I think, to to get the most in, enjoyment out of your hunt. Mm-hmm. Those are very important questions um, to to ask and and have answered for yourself. Um, I, I find, I saw it. I saw the wheels turning in Mark's head. As soon as you crunch that ice, Charles, I saw Mark go, mm, I, I can do one crunch. better. The, <laughs> the people that I try to, I guess, reach out to, or the, the people that I feel like um, are asking for it are asking for the for the experience is is that they want to learn how to go out on their own and be mm-hmm. successful and mm-hmm. i and i can't i don't know if like if somebody goes on a trip with me or you i don't know if that's going to prepare them for you know i i, I don't i don't i don't want to make any claims that 
Now you're going to be able to go out right. on to now wherever. You're, you're, yeah. now, now you can get dropped off of whatever yeah. piece of public land you want, and you will be a successful pig hunter. Here's, here's what it is. Um, this place provides the opportunity to accomplish like five different things. I don't even know what those five are, but we're going to make them up right now. So it's a target-rich environment. There's pigs here. Mm -hmm. So you have that. Right, uh, beauty, yeah, beauty. The, so the experience, the mm -hmm. beauty, you're you're getting all that. You can, and, it, and it's 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 what it's not. It's not like a drive around, and and it's not a big barley field in King City or whatever. There's places like that right. where you can drive around and shoot stuff. Two steps out of the truck. Mm -hmm. and I'm not ripping on that. I'm just saying that's what right. it's not. It's what that's what it's not here. Okay, so we got. Target rich, we have beauty, we have the experience. You can wear a backpack here. Like you can hike around with a backpack. Versatility. It's spot and stock go. hunting. You can do, um, we can go out and do glassing. We can do all the all the different types of hunting here, mm -hmm. right? What's number four? <laughs> Accommodations. Oh, okay. Accommodations, right. So and yeah. that can be whatever you want. That could be anywhere from a comfortable bed to sleep in to a one-man tent yep. and... And getting out and testing your metal yep. in the in the environment, so that next year when it's elk season, and you want to know kind of what you're made of, you want to know what it's like to wake up when it's when it's a uh, cold and wet outside and, and thirty two degrees outside, and, right? And, yeah, and because uh, hunting right, hunting right now is probably pretty similar to uh, a fall elk. Is your is your Walmart you're, bag? really worth it or right. is your you know whatever bag you, test out that stuff yeah right. test test yeah. out that stuff and 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 you can test it out here and and you won't pay with your life right or 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 <laughs> with it or with a drive to wyoming you can make a call that <laughs> yeah you, you can go you know what, let's just go back and uh i'm and, dying yeah i'm dying let's let, let, let's go let's go back and re revisit this and we can revisit it and, right right and uh um and then i guess number what would be number five? I'm I'm thinking of number five already. Maybe there's already a number a different thing you can come up with. But the th the thing that I find most that people want to learn is they um, I should look up an email because I just got an email I'm like Hey, you know I'm interested in this hunt and what I, I followed you on Instagram or something, but I really want to learn how to. I'm a novice hunter. I want to learn how to take care of the meat. What mm -hmm. do I do after I kill an animal? Because uh -huh. that's one thing, killing an animal. Then what do you do? Mm -hmm. You got a dead animal on the ground. A lot of, what do you do? Yeah. You know, that's a great question, actually. And it's not something people should be ashamed of. So if they want to learn how to break an animal down or pack it out or, or uh, you know, dress it out or what to do with it, with your animal, you know, yeah. like that. I can, so there's five things we, I guess we yeah. just came up so, with. So, yeah, and maybe to summarize some of the, some of those things up is... <laughs> and none of this was pre-thought, so no. we're, <laughs> maybe you have different five yeah, things or it, whatever, Right, but. is I want to know what you know. Yeah. And not that Charles and I know, know everything, but we've killed a few, few pigs between us. And uh, so, you know, a lot of it is, you know, I want to, I know what you want to do. So whether it's dressing the pigs, whether it's finding the pigs in the first place, whether it's, you know, how, what what can you get away with with pigs? What 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 can you not get away with? Um, uh, you know, what 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 all what all does it take? What commitment does it take? I, I you know I want to, and not that not that uh, Charles can give to you in in two days everything he knows, but but uh, one of the experiences you you get with him is is. Uh, it is is more than being a number is that when you leave you feel like oh, gosh i, I kind of learned something i learned what to do with these animals i learned how to find them i learned how to stalk them i learned how to hunt them i learned where they live i learned their habits i learned what their sign looks like i learned what i can get away with i learned when i can move when i can't move i learned a bunch of stuff so i i i i i, I came away with uh, this hunt with uh with uh, like, again, not that I can be dropped off on any public land and be successful, but I learned a bunch of stuff about pigs. I learned it. I learned a bunch of stuff about hunting. I learned a bunch of stuff about myself. I know that yeah. I can, I can, I, I, I can, or I can't walk around all day with a thirty-pound pack. I know that uh, 
you know, I can wake up when it's, uh, you know, 27 degrees outside, which may be cold, may may not be cold. You're saying, you know, and, and my, my gear has it fine and, and I can get into my clothes and wake up and, 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 and be comfortable or maybe I can't. So, you know, that, that's, that's one of the things you'll learn, learn on that hunt is, is what pig hunting is about and what, what you're about. The things I feel like I can teach people, if, you know, if they don't know what pig sign like, looks like, I can def- definitely show them the different types of pig sign. And the other thing is um, persistence. Mm-hmm. And, and I always go back to that. And what I mean is if there's pig sign in this canyon and there's pig sign in that canyon and there is an advantage point, you can glass the whole thing. It, the way that I hunt is I go down into the canyons. <laughs> and, and if I don't see one, then I go up to the next canyon. And if mm-hmm. I don't see one, I go into the, the next, next canyon. canyon. And that's what people will learn right. is how much water did you, did you bring enough water with you? Did you bring enough snacks with you? Mm-hmm. Are your are your boots right mm-hmm. for yourself? Are your um, is your pack fit good? Are you fit enough, you know, mm-hmm. to do it? You know, kind of a thing like that. That's usually what comes out of the whole thing mm-hmm. is the things I don't, I don't think people are expecting those types of things. Yeah. It's, it's actually the basics. It's, 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 sure. it's, it's not, Same. I have nothing that I can say or do. Like I can go out and kill a pig in 10 minutes and then the next time it takes, um, you know, a day. Oh, it takes two two days to even see a pick. Right. There's that's just the way it is. It's, it's hunting. You're hunting a wild animal. They're, they're, be persistent is the the best thing I can, and have the right gear. Yeah. You have your have yourself in shape enough. Have your be prepared in that way. There's yeah. the wild animal. A wild animal is a wild animal. They're going to do what they're going to do. They and they are yeah. where they are. Right. You can't really predict. You can't. Um, force or predict nature you can't do any of that no and and there's that's really what, what and are, are, are you are you ready are you ready when the, and are you ready when the when the time comes i yeah. i uh i mentioned this before to a number of people but it's a, a great example i went to one spot a, a guy told me says you know i think up on that no a guy who knew the area i think way up on that ridge up in that saddle up there is, is a good spot you know you should, someone should be up there so I went up, it took me, you know, from 5.30 to 8 in the morning, and I got up there 8 in, eight in the morning, and I sat there, and I knocked an arrow, and I stood on my back against a tree on this trail, and I waited 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12.30. I wonder if I can make my advantage a little bit better. So I've got around, and I eased around, and I looked, and, and I went about 100 yards, and I, go, I think I like this spot a little bit better. Right, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Two o'clock. I'm standing there, back against a tree. Arrow knocked. Because if something comes, it may come quick. Three o'clock. Four o'clock. Four thirty. Here comes this bull elk. This five by six, cruising down the trail, coming coming along. And I and I see him. And I literally have time to adjust my feet. He comes. He comes. He's you know he's a bull elk. He's in rut. And he's kind of on a fast walk. He gets behind a tree. I draw. He steps out and he's 15 yards away, and I plunk him, plunk him in the rib rib cage. Easy, great, easy shot. 15 15 yard broadside elk is 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 not a, not a hard shot. Yeah. What's hard is standing there for eight and a half hours, right. basically, and not and not moving, and 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 staying alert and ready all that all that time. Yep. And uh, so. It's, but you don't know it. it's it's playing the lottery. I could have sat there all day and maybe not a damn thing. And I've done that, and not a damn thing has come by. And that's usually what happens. <laughs> and that's usually what happens, <laughs> right? And then no, if never. Were, yeah. And if you were to see it on video, depends on how you edit it and everything else. But you know, see it on a TV show, you only get twenty mm-hmm. minutes or something of actual your whole entire hunt. So people are going to see. Somebody shooting a bull 15 yards away. Oh, well, that was really oh, yeah. kind of a thing. The amount of time that goes into each and every single one of those, you know, successes. Yeah. Um, it's pretty insane. Yeah. I mean, it just is. 
Yeah, so I say that one time, it's but I did mention, mention all the other times where we exactly. didn't. That's not the only time I've... But nobody I, wants I, to see that on that, TV. No, no one sees the. No one wants to hear about the time that I sat there from eight in the morning till till seven in the seven thirty in the evening, and nothing came by. Yeah. You know, but but uh, you know, it's the persistence. It it, 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 it it does, and and if you are if you are if you are persistent and ready, and 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 trained enough, there's a lot of different things will happen to you. Things will come by on trails. Things will come by on water holes. Things will come by, pass through in saddles on travel routes. Things will, you know, walk by your, your the right your right tree. But you got to be there, and you got to be you got to be ready. If you, it's really really hard to do. But if you, um, sometimes I can do it, sometimes I can't. But if you can always act like your your Corey is fifty yards away. Mm-hmm. At all times, try that. Act like at all times something's fifty yards away from me. Yeah, do that the whole day. And it's the reason why I say that. One of the reasons why I say that is there's so many times where you're. That's great. That's a great cue. You're you're say you're you know I don't know what time you're done. You're done. You're just like I'm just gonna walk back now, but you're still three miles away. But you just decided I'm gonna go back to camp. And how many times has it happened where you just like give up kind of the ghost and then you just bump something <laughs> and you're like, God, dang, something, it was just right there. Was right. R- Ryer and I did that, yeah. that two years ago in last, n- not last year, year before that in, Col- in uh, Colorado. When we, we sat on that rock. We, we sat on that rock and we're waiting there and we called, you know, and nothing. All right, let's go back. We start out. Yep. <laughs> Was, was it with an elk? Yeah, yeah elk. There, oh, there, he just you, snuck up, and he was probably fifty yards from us, and he, he just he just had you been calling? He, yeah, yeah. We so. we had been calling, and he had walked in, and and we just I just lost focus, lost concentration, lost that there's something within fifty yards of me, and I I think on whitetails that's one of the things that's kept me in the tree a long time is yeah. is and I'd never put it in those words that you put it. It's good. It's like there's something right around the corner. There's something that's just about to walk in and it's always kept me interested. Even when it's, you know, it's been hours and there's nothing. It's like, there's something right around the corner here. All right. Something's coming down the trail, you know, and all my, all my movements are like still, you know, not right. You know, I don't, even though I've been sitting there for four hours and haven't seen anything, I don't go. Yeah. Where, you know, where in the heck, it, uh, that's you know, such it, a big difference. It, yeah. It, it's like, yeah. It's like, look this way slow, yeah. look, look, that, look that way slow. And, it, you know, you can it, have it does, 10 people sitting in the same, you're sitting down. It's the way you're sitting down. Yeah. That's a huge, huge yeah. difference. It's the way you're walking through the woods. It's yeah. the way you're everything. And the, I, the littlest things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's where the innate passion for the hunt has to come because if you don't have the passion for the hunt when you're sitting in the tree, when you're sitting on that water hole, when you're sitting on that knoll glassing, um, when you're walking mile after mile and you haven't seen anything, if you don't have the passion, it's easy to turn that still hunt to a walk in the woods. Yeah. It's easy to sit, turn that sitting into to a tree to a waste of time and you're just and you're fidgeting up there and you're moving around it's easy to turn that um hours of sitting on the knoll glassing for sheep or deer into just jerk off time sitting there not really looking for anything just wasting your time Mm -hmm. if you don't if you don't have a if you don't have a passion for for the hunt yeah um it's 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 tough it's tough keep your focus yeah and and it's also at the same time it's fine to do that mm-hmm. as long as you're fine. Like there's if you're been fine with any it. areas where in Idaho we do this, where we, where we meet up and we're watching or watching and we're just like, okay, number one, we're getting super cold. We need to do <laughs> something, you know, mm-hmm. kind of a thing. Let's have fun. But we, sure. you know, it's like, okay, we're, 
we're done with this, aren't right. we? Everything knows we're here. They're going to know we're, you know, kind of, and it's fine. That's a part of having the fun. But flip the switch and you you, flip, you, you, yeah. you're, you're, in, you're in a different mode. But don't be surprised and don't be, <laughs> it always teaches you a lesson on the simplest, most basic thing, walking back or doing something yeah. stupid. And you're like, holy crap, it's laying down right there and I'm not ready. And then it's looking at you and you've got, if you had your bow and you were ready, yeah. you've got all kinds. You got all the time in the world, but you were just weren't, you know, you just have to have confidence in the spot. You got to yeah. have confidence in that area at all times. You know, Dwight, Shue, you know, Dwight, she was, he was the editor for bow hunter magazine, just passed away. Yeah, recently. Just yeah. Passed away yeah. Uh, so I was videoing him once we were hunting in Wyoming and, uh, and we're walking along and Dwight was re really dry. But every once in a while, he he just do some random random funny things, and we he'd be walking and and he liked to hunt with me. He, he, me have me as a cameraman because I came in shape, and he could. Dwight was in excellent shape. Dwight ran ex, Dwight ran ultra marathons, trail runs, fifty hundred mile trail runs. Did did uh, um, did Ironman mm -hmm. things. So he 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 was he was in excellent How long condition. Ago was this? Um, I videoed him. Uh, was probably uh, it was probably about nine years ago, right now, ten years, 12, oh. eleven years ago. When 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 I last videoed him, maybe somewhere in there. Um, and uh, we walk along, and if he thought he had a step on me, he all of a sudden he'd go race you to the top of the hill. You know, and actually he's running up there, and so he's running with his bow, just ass over tea kettle, and I'm running with my pack with the kit, with the tripod and and the camera. And one time we, we did that, and you talk about learning a lesson. We run right up to the top of the hill, and there's a bull set, you know, cr crashing off, and we yeah. just you know we lost we lost focus, but we 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 had turned uh, our hunt into into fun, but unfortunately our fun fun landed uh, right in the middle of an elk's lap and coincided. Yeah, exactly. You but know, uh, but you got to laugh that off. You do, you do. Because how long were you hunting elk that? Yeah, how, how long was that trip? <laughs> that was a two week trip. So, but think about it. <laughs> it's a it's a two week trip out of fifty two weeks. Yeah. To a wild animal, it doesn't have seasons. It doesn't have. It does. It could care. It, it's going to run from you at any right point in time or whatever. It could and have been three. Yeah. It, I think it's always a a an important um, perspective to have is that. The wild animal doesn't have a doesn't have like a human season. It doesn't, doesn't have, have a season. calendar. It doesn't have a clock. It, it it could care less. It it doesn't care if you ever see it. It's not a. It's not keeping track. Yeah. You know, like we do things like right. that. Keep coming back. Right. You know, it, it doesn't go. Um and uh, Mark and Charles have three yeah. days left in this hunt. You know, I've got I've got to be on. Yeah. I've got to be on edge. You leave, and the next person comes in, or the wolf comes in, or the grizzly comes. In, you know. He's he's making a living out of staying alive. Yeah, and uh, my point is that two weeks is really not a lot of time if you want to kill an animal that spends its entire life mm -hmm. surviving against apex predators. Yeah, we're not. I mean, we're an apex predator because of lots of things, but out our, in the our forest, intelligence. But out in the forest, out in the forest, we're actually not. No, um, especially with a bow. I mean, that's. Yeah, we're we're just not. There's there's other things that they right. got to worry you, about. That right, are, that are you want you want to on the list dr us. drop us off w w with our bow one on one against a grizzly. <laughs> we're not going to win. No, one on one, it's, even against a pissed off black bear, we would yeah. one on one against a 120 pound wolf. Probably not going to fare that well. Yeah, against a 120 pound mountain lion, probably not going to do. You know, we're, we're 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 probably down the list of. Uh, it takes us some time to get up there because yeah. we're we're. We're exiting our element, which is the life we live. Mm -hmm. We're not full-time hunters. You right. know what I mean? We're we do. We do. And entering this, oh, now I'm a hunter thing. You know what I mean? Right. And some of us do it a little more than others. But I mean, in reality, it's like, right. you know. But they're being hunted all the time. If you only did something for most most hunters hunt, what would, what would you say? A year. What's the average hunter how many weeks? Average hunter. If, if, if weeks is even. Yeah, a, I was going to say if, a couple, a few, one, three. Uh, you know, average guy gets getting out of. Let's few, just say it's nine days. If, he, just, if he's a duck, if he's a duck hunter, okay. and he's an average duck hunter, he's an average duck hunter, he's probably going, you know, five or eight times a year. Okay. So, 
let's just say eight. Let's just eight, say it's yeah. eight days. Let's just say it eight, eight, eight days. days. If somebody, um, you you wouldn't you wouldn't say I'm an electrician. If you only went and worked on somebody's panels for eight right. days a year, right? right? So it's a funny thing, you know. We call ourselves this, but and what I'm the point I'm trying to get across is our expectations. Mm -hmm. You only do something eight days a year. You suck. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. It can be all the fun in the world. Don't get me wrong. Like it can be the most fun in the world, but don't come home. Don't be discouraged, even though it is. But still, if you only do something eight days a year. Yeah. I only concentrate on being an electrician eight days a year. I'm not. I'm, yeah. I'm not being hired by what, anybody. Right. <laughs> like, I, I think. I, what, I, I think what you, you know, know. What you notice is by day eight, you finally just start feeling yeah. like like. All right, I, I finally feel a good walking around day here. I finally feel it's good about what like I'm that. noticing. I'm fi yeah. I, I finally feel good about the, the things I'm seeing. Yeah. That that's what you start feeling. Your body day, starts getting day. used to actually doing things, right? And again, yeah. that's what you when you when you pay a guide. That's what you pay for is to speed up all that learning curve and go. Yeah. All right, I'm here. I I don't have yeah. You know, I have not had time to do the yeah. Because if you were to put people on the private land that people are guided on. All right, I'm not going to show up. You guys go ahead and go. This accessory is going to be completely different. Yeah. It's, it's not like there's just animals walking around all yeah. over the place. You open up your front door. Right. And, oh, there yeah. they are. No, I, it's the I, Garden of Eden. I, I've had people up here and, <laughs> and, and they, go, they want to go pig hunting. And I'm like, sure. And they go, oh, I didn't see anything. You know, there's a lot of ground. You know, and then, and then I start spending a little more time with them. All right, here at this time of day, try here. At this time of day, go down there. This time of the day, go down there. You know, I speed up their learning curve by yeah. 30, 40 years or whatever it is that yeah. I've got on this play. You know, and then all of a sudden, magically, they're a pig hunter. Yep. And, and but if I just told them, hey, you know, go go ahead, stay 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 in the house and go find a pig. Yeah. They they would. You know, I'd venture to say they wouldn't have much different success level than if they were hunting on public land. Yeah. Because right. they, they, they just start wandering around going, there's just a lot of ground here and not necessarily like the pigs are in places. But again, with the guy saying, okay, he's paying them is where those places are. When are they at this places? Yep. Ryer, should we wrap this up? We've carried on this longer than most are podcast haven't we no we shouldn't lot we shouldn't you guys yeah. haven't done nearly enough weird things we haven't done we've had enough. one maybe 30 seconds of hollywood impersonations yeah we, well, I, it's been this has been a very focused conversation <laughs> focused drinking focused drinking that's which which is completely different than i wasn't like, i didn't know out. what was gonna we've actually had a pretty good conversation i think I'm not sure. It feels I, like I was hoping for it to go feels more like off the a, rails than, than yeah, it needs. Yeah, no, it's been really has. focused. Has, well, well not, you guys haven't talked too, about too anything horns, but any, so, but nearly if controversial. Yeah, we, we could talk about, uh, you know, I made a post the other day who your favorite, favorite uh, president was. Pedro. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that, did you see my response? I don't know if you got it. I don't know if it's you it. or if it's him responding. Right. Well, you don't, you, I don't right, know who you I'm don't talking know. to. But, but you want to know pay, a secret? Pay, Pedro, <laughs> offer, pay, Pedro did offer you his protection. Yeah. For, so I, I got, I, I did. I did no, that. I'm just like, I don't. Which, which person who was that? that? I don't so, know. So I, I think th that speaks to how well I can mirror yeah, Mark's personality yeah. on did, social media. So a, a dis, I think a disclaimer that for the, a disclaimer for some of you <laughs> who listen. So when you when you chime in on uh, Mark Groupie Outdoors post, uh, most of the time, uh, Ryer comes up where him and I will talk about things, but I'm going to put this up or something like that. So Mark Groupie Outdoors is Ryer Reporter and, and Mark Groupie, and Ryer will think of things to... To, to 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 post up and a lot and a lot of, a lot of times he 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 res, he does he does respond so your your responses that you get you never know whether they're from uh, from from Ryer or from me but he did when when he the 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 who is your favorite president he did roll over and urinate on himself that's and, not and, true and he would not, not he, when, when, when all of a sudden people started putting not. Uh, um, popular amongst us rednecks uh, uh picks he did not want to answer those questions anymore 
No, see, you've got it all wrong, Mark. <laughs> I did not get it wrong. Okay, okay, no, okay, reason- Char- Charles, listen, he's going to explain all this, and then I'm going to be exactly right. So go ahead. The reason that I wanted Mark to respond is because Mark has a little bit more political tech than me. And because it is Mark Groupie Outdoors, I didn't want to insert my political opinions into the responses. Of oh, people. but but just a while ago, you were able to say, you don't know if it's me or you don't know if it's Mark. How great am I? No, I see. Oh, so okay. I see. You kind of got me there. What were most people saying? Well, so we had a lot of we well, had so there's a couple of people that said we, Trump. We and, had we had three or, we had three or four or five Trumps. We had three or four Teddy Roosevelts, and we had one one Obama, and uh, um, and then of course you know uh, my number some of my redneck friends you know did not like the oh, the Obama response, but the guy who with the Obama response could defend himself quite well. So actually, I think he had better reasons yeah, for he, picking he, Obama he, he than the better reason to, Trump. Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah the, 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 some of the Trump supporters was because he's not Obama, and yeah. because he has big balls. Yeah. To which okay. I say, how would you know that? Yeah. Um, so so uh, any, anyways, uh, when, you, when you do chime into Mark Groupie Outdoors, you get a little right reporter, you get a little Mark Groupie. We try, As, we try to keep it in the spirit of, we, of the community. We, show, we, we do try to keep it in the spirit, and, and we do. Who when, was when, the when, winner? When we do, was when, there a winner present? No, there's no, there's no winner in that. So I mean, just as far as what people uh, commented. Yeah. Um, well, the I guess the, it was pretty the, the, per, even. the first who was the first person that chimed in with oh Reagan the person of Reagan and talked about freedom is is not more than one generation away and the quote. yeah the that quote. that quote now that, that was a good one so I, I you know I I could I could give I could give it to that I could give it to that we should send a person a hat or something. They have to have been listening to this. If they if they listen if they to this, listen to this and we'll they hit say, us up, if they we'll listen to this and they say we have to name it. so. We're gonna to have to find their name, though. Of course, yeah. they'll know. They'll know. They said they'll know it. who it they'll, is. They'll know. They're the only person that put Reagan. And then we can find that. And then we can find it. I don't have internet up here on my phone, or else I'd go check right now. Okay. You don't? No, I have AT and T. AT and T. So we just had this discussion in the car. I I I changed my phone. I upgraded my phone a few months ago, and. This entire time before upgrading my phone, I I kept telling myself, trying to remember to when I changed my phone to change my service provider to Verizon, and then I got too excited about changing the phone, and I did not change my service so provider. So when you're saying you upgraded, you really didn't upgrade? No. You just I paid, you just, pay, you just paid for your new more for a phone and more for a service, but you got less service. I get the oh, same amount of service. Oh, <laughs> Good job. oh, millennial bad decision making. <laughs> what else is is uh, controversial? I but, couldn't possibly answer the best president thing. Like that's such a hard because you've only been alive for so long, and then during your life experience, there's only been so many presidents right. who actually really paid so, attention. To. Yeah. So so let's let's you know, let's let's work our way and back. Everybody We're romanticizes back. the presidents of the past. Uh, of that's, course. That's so we we can yeah. work our way backwards on these things, and maybe that's a good way. So Trump. Success in the economy right now, blah, blah, blah. He's so got you, big you balls. Can, you can, and he's got big balls. So you can say, yeah. well, with Obama, the economy got stabilized and started. If you had invested in the stock market when Obama was uh, uh, first started as president and it plummeted to the bottom versus what it was when he got out, you did very well. Yeah. If you if you inv- uh, if you invested in a lot in a, in a number of stock things, you did you you you, you did pretty well. And then Trump took over and to his credit kept kept the momentum going. Okay, so Obama, you could say, well, he, you know, the it kept plum, you know, plummeting and plummeting when he was originally president, blah, blah, blah. Well, it was plummeting pretty fast when George uh, uh, George Bush, you know, handed it over to Obama. It was it was headed down fast. Why was it headed? Well, it was headed that way because of the a lot of it because of the housing collapse. Why did the housing collapse? Well, the housing collapse thing came. Uh, Bill Clinton signed into law these um, these subprime where we where banks had to do these subprime mortgages where the banks had to loan money yep. to people uh, even if they weren't if even if they weren't qualified, and 
um, you know, and, and then, uh, you know, well, and then Bush, well, Bush was in these war, you know, uh, wars, blah, blah, blah. Well, the World Trade, the, the uh, Twin Towers were a a attacked. That was in, pl that was, you know, in planning way before, you know, way before uh, he ever took office. That happened when Clinton or the Bush before him, you know, you yeah. know, all, all, all the, all these, you know, things were started. So, uh, you know, when Carter, you know, f had giant inflation, you know, some of that started rolling under Ford's watch. Um, you know, so the, these things don't happen in a vacuum. They don't just happen, you know, when this president, you know, uh, you know, Obama was in president from here to here and everything in those t in that tight window, yeah. you know, was him. And yeah. Bush was president from here to here and everything in that tight window is him. No, I mean, there's there's a tidal wave of stuff that's I could have been president and a certain amount of those things would have happened regardless. Yeah. Yeah. There's an ebb and flow to an economy sure. yeah. of 400 million people in the United States whatever you yeah. know and it, there's yeah exactly i, I see yeah. what you're saying yeah, yeah. and and and, and there, there's there's an, there's an ebb and flow and there's something that you know this president did that you know that 8 years later took place you know some some of it reagan when he passed the tax act he passed it uh, retroactively and I don't know if you remember when uh, Willie, you probably don't remember, Willie Nelson went bankrupt and a bunch of other uh, famous that, yeah. actors and musicians went yeah. bankrupt. He, he passed a tax law that made these tax deductions null and void and retroactive. And so the, re so the IRS was going, okay, and, and we were sub subject to that. Uh, um, you know, the IRS came to us and said, we want our $20 million. Twenty million dollars, and it's like, you know, I have twenty million. So you better either have a way that you can say you can pay it over a certain amount of time, or or yeah. or, or or to declare bankruptcy, or or, or something like that. And uh, um, so, you know, there's, you know, there's 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 a, there's a, you know, thing things are as not as black and white as they. Uh, is a, is a, is a scene my favorite president is the president who never was and i always wanted ron paul to be president i really did i i and and, yeah. and it's not to um he ran he was a republican but he always i guess ran as a sort of a libertarian and libertarian independent but sort of thing. i don't like Gary Johnson ran as a libertarian, but I disagree with Gary, with Gary Johnson on a lot of issues. I really liked Ron Paul's mm -hmm. angle of where the individual was was really yeah. made the government. And the way that he, I read all those books, you mm -hmm. know, and that's what, I kind of feel like if you're going to run for president, you got to write at least two books and everybody needs to read them before you vote. And I'm just saying that because I learned so debates yeah. are ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a circus. It is a circus. The, the amount of time, like, let's ask you a really important question. 60 seconds. Yeah. How crazy is that? Yeah. And, right? and, and then when, and when, when Trump. Just think would, about how long you guys just talked about yeah. the public land pig hunting. Pig hunting. Yeah. So important to the yeah. world. Yeah. Probably the most important thing ever. And, and we didn't scratch it. And we, yeah. and and we beat it up for an hour. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, that, that's but, it's such a. But weren't debates a long time? Didn't like Lincoln and those guys debated yeah. for days, didn't they? Yeah, but it was like for, during yeah. the Republican debate, it was like Trump would say something, and against Cruz, and then right. Cruz and him would butt heads, and then Trump would say something and, uh, against someone else, and they would butt heads, and then it was just always this bad. And, 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 and it was, and, yeah, we're watching entertainment, and yeah. I'm going, yeah. crap, I can't, I can't even. Um, Carly Fiorini. I wanted to hear more from her. You know, she said yeah, good but stuff, like but her, Ron Paul, can't get in a word. Can't get in a word. And uh, I'll say this to what is true about what Donald Trump has to say, and is why Ron Paul could never get elected is because the swamp swamp would never want Ron Paul to get elected. Of course not. They, they because they would lose power. The Republicans would lose power. They didn't, you know all that. The stinking stupid ass Republicans, they they don't care 
they're weak and feckless. They would be happy to lose into the Democrats all the time as long as they could be second in power. You know, it's like, all right, we get, you know, we get to pretend that, you know, but they don't, they don't want to lose it. And, 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 uh, you know, that, that, that's, that's, that's what Republicans are afraid of. The whole thing is Trump is, is all these traditional people in there go, crap, we might not have a, we might not have a place in here. We, you know, we've always sucked. We've, you know, we always roll over and piss on ourselves when it comes to a fight with the Democrats and they always win, but damn it, at least we were second. And, uh, and now they're in a, just in a two place race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so uh, politics and all that are just absolutely crazy. You asked earlier what this revolution thing this is actually means. Um, this particular thing is we're talking about a tattoo, an right? Intellectual, now, like an intellectual revolution. Hmm. And so people having, I want something that I can be a part of though. I can't be a part of an intellectual room. No, you're an intellectual. You're a very smart guy. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> We're erasing that from the podcast immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need any record of anybody ever saying that Mark is intelligent. <laughs> the, the idea, it's really hard to get into, but, you know, the, the individual, that definition alone of what I personally think the founders... Um, we're trying to focus on is a very, very important. Um, uh, that's what's what we're missing. I think we we get, we get caught up in this and that and everything else. But when you bring together a bunch of humans, doesn't matter who they are. We're all going to disagree. We're mm -hmm. all going to fight. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. I, I personally think the founders as, as faulty as they were, of course they were, they were humans and things that were going on at the time. Of course they were. They understood that humans don't get along. Mm -hmm. And the importance that they put on private property rights, the importance mm -hmm. they put on the individual, the importance they put on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it used to be property is, is, used to be part of that too. But I think that's lost on us. It is. It's, it's that the whole idea of that and how the idea of we are in an imperfect world and we're never going to have a perfect solution that's lost on us i mm -hmm. think people are looking for a perfect, perfect solution. solution and there's not and that's the crazy part yeah like it's as good as it sounds i would love it of course i would freaking love it but it's impossible yeah it's irrational to even have a conversation about it and i think that's where we find ourselves now is people looking for a perfect solution yeah we have to understand humanity and understand the the faultness of of humanity. Uh, I think we and should then come up with our, and that's why individualism and private property rights and all, that's why they become so important because they actually face reality head on. Yeah. Um, but that's a really, that's, that's, I mean, we could go on for hours about that kind of stuff, but those are my foundations yeah. <laughs> to the, to the, to the whole thing. No, the, this, this, our, our whole system was, I, I think set up around uh, debate and and the uh, and the bannering of I, I, ideas and being able to do it without being persecuted and being able to say how you feel without you know and that that's where some of it is failing right now as you you know if you mention the wrong politically correct statement you know you're 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 you're, you're gone you know and you're labeled and, and, this, you're labeled, this right. you're, la you're labeled that you're labeled you know you're labeled uh a racist, you're la labeled an anti-woman person or something like that, and and that that can be a stone that you can never get out from underneath, and you know, and and, it, and it's too bad because you know the, the the media and Hollywood and academics and stuff has so so much power to 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 you know to bury, you know to you know to bury you, and uh, but uh, but the whole you know th this whole thing about us not being able to you know the right and the left not being able to agree doesn't bother me so much because that's how it was some of it some of it doesn't really doesn't bother me because that's how it, i mean it was is supposed to be set up with but we're supposed to be able to debate this that, that's the, that's yeah. the thing i and i i think maybe where it's changed is maybe we've always we've always disagreed but we've always been able to debate it and now it's like somehow we can't debate it because I don't think people actually talk to each other face to face. Yeah. Um, 
social media Hashtag. Like debates are had over social media decisions are made over social media yeah and and i even think politicians these days when they have the what's the, what's the big speech the state of the union yeah. or whatever else and they give theirs they're not really speaking to each other they're speaking to each other speaking to the camera mm -hmm. and that that creates a, a completely different dynamic Right, it can it, it it creates a a sense of um, um, what's it called when you're insecurity. It's like an insecurity because mm -hmm. you're the reality of, of today with with Facebook and TV and twenty four hour news is that um, you're over analyzing. Every, you're not. Just sitting across from somebody, right? You don't okay. have to answer to anybody. You don't. Have you to obviously, I don't know exactly what your political, but I know people of all political, you know, shapes and forms and everything else. If I sit down and talk to them, we get, we get along pretty good. We we'll disagree maybe on this and that and everything else, but we don't we don't come away the same way right. that it is shown on TV right. or on Facebook or whatever else. And that like that that. Um, or if it was left to you. of yeah. communication has been, it's terrible. I mean, it's a good thing. It's how we met. We met because of social sure. media. There's really, really good things that come with it. Mm -hmm. But there's also really, really bad things. Yeah. And culturally, I think we're seeing the bad things well, um, as far as like a, being able to hide behind it. Maybe you a know, civil it, war might, yeah. could, you, could, you could argue that it could start. And it yeah. could be, you know, 300 years down the line, uh, psychologists and everybody else, they could probably break it down to the mentality of social media. <laughs> well, pe people, you know, hide behind their, the, the, the keyboard and they don't have to fake because because you're right. You know, you've got you've got friends of all different persuasions. Yeah. You talk. I've got kids, voting age kids. I've got kids that voted for strongly for Trump. I've got kids that voted strongly for Hillary. Because they couldn't stand Trump. I've got kids that were voting age that probably didn't vote. I've got, you know, the, 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 the whole spectrum. But because I know them, I love them, and I trust them, I can sit down and have a conversation with them. Just like the same thing. I don't, I don't know all your beliefs on everything. Yeah. But because I developed trust with you, we could sit there. And, and uh, one, one friend that I've met on social media, Sawyer Fisher, he... Uh, yeah. Uh, he's yeah, so he he's uh you know I, I i believe he's i don't know if i want to i don't want to call him a liberal democrat but it, but i i i believe he's you get the he's feeling more, he he's, might be. He, he's more he's he's more toward, towards that side and but him and i go hunting together and i have a great time sitting down and talk with him he's intelligent he doesn't accuse you of anything he doesn't call you names does anything and we can sit there and talk about the ideas the concepts yeah. We, 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 can t we, can, we can talk about the issues and we can go, yeah, you know, I, you know, that, that, you know, that's, that's one thing I don't like about my side or that's, you know, that bothers me about this. Or that bothers me about that. And, and, and he's comfortable enough to say, you know, yeah, you know, I, you know, you know, I, I don't, I don't like when our side says this and, you know, I can say, yeah, it's stupid when our side, you know, so you, you disarm each other and you, and, and, and you, and you get it, but, but you get a chance to, you know, to really talk about it way deeper than, than the sound bites that yeah. everyone attacks each other on. Yeah. And, and, and you, and you develop a trust and, and, and him and I, honestly, I think if you locked us in a room for, I don't know if they'd be the right solutions, but it'd be a left person and a right person, you know, locked in a room for three hours and we, we'd come up with, an agreed solution for for ninety percent of the policies that we want the country to o operate on, and and it'd probably be pretty, you know, wouldn't be that horrible. But if if representation was represented, um, and you know, if private property rights were really protected, your differences. You could have differences without them affecting each other so much, and and that goes back to my original point of um, the country being so divided, and the you know like 
you doing this and you doing this and this, and, you know, we must have a law to do this to attack this person. It's, it's basically mob rule. Mm-hmm. Is what we're, <laughs> I think what we're getting to. Yeah. Um, we, we don't have, um, it, it's hard for you. I, th- I think what people are seeking is representation. And the problem, whose phone? My, my, my phone's ringing. Hold Where's on. Where's that at? Let's see what's going on. It's like in the middle of a concert. Mm. Hey, Hutton, how's it going? We are we're doing a podcast right now. You're actually live on the air. Hi. <laughs> oh. You're going to have to put it on speaker, though, yeah, Mark. Speaker if you, if you, well, we, we're going to put you on speaker, honey. Okay, now. Yeah, yeah, you're on now. You're on speaker. Uh, and now we have a call from we Lodi, call. California. Michelle Grippy, Michelle, you are on, Michelle, the air. on the air. We do have a call. Yes. You're, you're caller number hey, one. Hey. Hey. You know, Ask are, a question. Are you, <laughs> you, you have to have a question for us if you're calling. I was just calling to see what you're doing. I'm going to bed. <laughs> you're, are you going to bed? Yes. Okay. Is Hi, Jake, is, uh, Hi. Hi, baby. How you doing? Good. Good. Did you get all your homework done? Mm-hmm. That a boy. Are you going to take your scooter to school tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, that that means you that means you got to get up early and ready and everything because you can't leave. You you can't leave late and take your scooter. Okay. So you need to be. Did you did you uh, did you feed the goats and the dog tonight? Did you feed the goats tonight? I forgot. You forgot? A good thing they're out and they can eat whatever they want. And I fed the dog before I left. So, all right. I'll take care of them in the morning. I'll take care of them uh, tomorrow when I get home. Or, okay. All right. Okay, bye. All right. Love you, baby. Love you, too. All right. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. All right. Good night, honey. Love you. Well, call, caller, caller number one. That was caller number one. That was, call, that was, that was, that was caller number one. Someone did call in. Someone did, so someone someone did, did call in. It's like it was live. <laughs> they just didn't know it was live. <laughs> yeah. now, now what's going to happen is every time we post on social media that we're going up to the ranch, people are going to we're going to look at you know, 9.30, you could be doing a podcast. I wonder right. on the off chance if I call now if I might be. Yeah, <laughs> surprise guest appearance. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Guest appearance. A guest appearance. Or caller. I mean, a caller is a guest on the show. In a roundabout sort of way. So, do you hunt, do you hunt waterfowl? No. So you're just pretty I much have. big game. I've. Um, so so what what do you hunt? You hunt pigs. You hunt? you hunt deer. I, I, yeah, I definitely hunt deer. Um, I hunt pigs, you hunt I hunt elk. Deer, I hunt elk, and that's it. Okay. Um, so within deer or blacktail, um, I just started hunting mule deer. You went back to South Dakota. I've been right? hunting whitetail. Um, you know, I guess it's been a while since. Well, actually, in South Dakota, I was technically hunting whitetail. I did you see do either, yeah. a really nice whitetail buck that I decided to go after, but I grew up hunting whitetail. Um, so I've killed a lot of whitetail for sure. Um, I'll increase my mule deer hunting to desert muleys in Arizona, mm. um, to coos deer in Arizona, uh, to javelina in Arizona. Um, I've only hunted elk in Idaho. Um, but I mostly hunt, you know, I hunt a lot, I hunt blacktail. If you could hunt one thing the rest of your life and you had to hunt whatever the seasons said, said they were, you know, it's not like you could hunt 365 days a year. If you could hunt one thing left, one thing for the rest of your life, they said, okay, this one thing's. Wait, seasons matter or? The seasons matter. Seasons matter. You can't oh. like hunt elk and in july or january or whatever so your elk you're hunting left with hunting elk during elk season deer during season deer season um javelina during javelina season if there's a pig during pig season if there is there so what what would you uh pigs i would too 
Just 365, 365 days a year. Days a year, yeah. They're and I, da- they're damn tasty. They're damn fun. Yeah. And uh, I, I I would too if they say, if someone said you can have elk, deer, pigs, whatever. No, uh, I, 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 I ducks. I truly feel that I've had this a couple of times while guiding, and and this is a I guess a funny instance where people don't know because they just they're not really hunting that much. Um, there was a girl who, uh, had killed a really small pig and, um, but we hadn't, I don't think we'd had it. She was deer hunting. It was, it was a guided deer hunt, but with that, she could kill a pig, killed a pig. Um, she had some mishaps with a deer so far, like just the rifle was way off. Her dad mm-hmm. was like, oh yeah, the gun sighted in, you know, kind of a thing. And we had this deer, nice four by four standing there broadside in front of us but we snuck on and she missed from a tripod and i was like god you you hit like a foot over its back and she was like i was right on that thing so we came back to camp set up the target the thing was a foot over foot the target over. i was like oh god and i was like guide and going here like you know you don't get chances on like four that, by four yeah. bucks like this really nice you know black tails Anyways, we sighted her in. Um, she, uh, we found this one pig. It was really strange, and honestly, I'll, I, I didn't even realize it myself that the pig was that small. Mm-hmm. It was one pig by itself. Yeah, I knew it was a small pig, but I didn't realize it was that small. Anyways, she made a hundred thirty yard shot. Let's say whatever it was, dropped it, and it, perfect shot. Super small pig. And uh, we're continuing the hunt deer. And her dad, her dad was pretty old, but I got him on the walkie talkie the whole time so we can communicate. Because I had him up the top. I'm like, well, if you can't go with us, you stay up here, you glass for us. Because we're going to drop down in canyons and, you know, pigs and deer, they often come up, you know. So you let us know what's going on. So this group of pigs was coming down. And um, we were probably 35 yards away from the biggest boar I've ever seen in my life. And I'm like, Hey, uh, um, I won't say his name. I won't say his real name. Dave. Um, yeah. Uh, there's a, he's like, shoot it. I'll pay for it. It's like, I'm paying for this whole hunt. I'll pay for it. Cause she already shot the pig. You know, she heard it and everything. She's like, Oh, I feel really bad and everything. And I'm like, I just want to tell you right now. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to, but you will never make do better money. Than this in your life. You are never gonna see a, a boar that big ever in your life. Because I've been hunting pigs for a long time in a short amount of time. And that's the biggest pig I've ever seen. Like I'm gonna shoot it. I'm I'm right, you know, which I, I didn't do it. But I, I was just like, oh my gosh, I this is this is insane. I can see its tusk sticking out. It's a giant freaking pig, you know, whatever. She doesn't do it. And uh then there was like an whatever. She ended up shooting. Comedy a, she ended up shooting a, a a giant buck after her gun failed, misfired like a click on a different buck. She started crying, and I I think I might have even started crying almost. I'm just like <laughs> this is insane. What's going on? You know. She ends up shooting a giant buck at 180 yards, but um, the. My point back to what you what you asked about what I could hunt, you know, for the rest of my life, if it was one thing. Um, there's certain instances with pigs, and it depends on where you hunt. This is the weird thing about pigs. I feel like getting a trophy boar to me, the same thing as getting a 30 inch mule deer. Mm-hmm. If you get the right one and you got it in the right spot, like you if the you're right way, yeah. hard, like you did it all the right way. That's so hard to freaking kill a trophy boar it's it's you don't see them they the way that they move the way that they're constantly moving it's just it's just a whole different ball game yeah um a true wild pig that's that's just out there roaming the mountains that's right it's one of the hardest things um, to kill again not not to but you got 365 days to to, to try i don't have that option with any other animal you know again not not to jackrabbit not to 
besmirch or bad mouth than in any other outfitters, but, but some of these places where these pigs come down into the valleys and feed, and then they have to come up the right way, and you know right where they're coming all the time, and there's 50 or 100 pigs are going to yeah. walk by you in the, ne- in, in, in the ne- next tower. It, it's not that hard to... No. It's not that hard to pick off, a, you know, a, a good boar. Any sort of reasonable hunter, you know, in those situations is going to go. Around. But that's but why you, you'll you, see. And this isn't. This is just a making the statement so people understand. That's why you'll see a lot of three hundred pound guys with trophy boars. Yeah. It it, and it's fine. And it's and it's good on them. If you have a place like that mm-hmm. where pigs are coming in like that all the time, and you. I mean, hey, it is what it is. What, yeah, what do sure. you do? Trying to make it harder? Yeah. Why? No, no sense of me. Yeah. They're they're here. It's easy. Let's get it done with, you know? Yeah. But yeah, what's he what's he gonna do? You yeah. know, drive you around to bad spots for a day and a half and right. then No. Why would he do that? Yeah. Yeah. So but that that's the really that is the thing about pigs is that it is so different. Yeah, wherever it's, you go, it, it it's is a, it's it a is, whole different. It's very different, and you, and also you can you can have that. You, even on wild pigs, you can have the experience anywhere from I'm shooting them in a pen to I'm shooting them on I'm shooting elk on public land, and this is and this is how hard it is. I mean, you yeah. you can you you. you can, you know, and I'm having that sort of experience and feeling that sort of joy and accomplishment of, you know, of of of, of, get, of, get, of getting something. So it's uh, not all, certainly not all pig hunts are created equal. Definitely not. That's a, and and it couldn't be any more. That couldn't be any more true. Not yeah. all pig hunts are created equal. If there's one animal. Yeah. That that's why I mentioned earlier an hour ago, is. Uh, is you know what are you looking for are you looking for just to drop the hammer on something if you are um you know there's there's guides out there that will get you a little good out there and drop the hammer right are you looking for you know an experience and then what kind of experience you're looking for you know then then you may have to search a little harder and and be willing to risk a little more you know it, it, it's like all right you know, I spent, you know, it's been a day and a half and I've had one sighting or, you know, yeah. you know, and all of a sudden here's another sighting and, you know, I'm not being run over by pigs. Um, so, you know, what's the experience you're looking for? And it, it can sound like sour grapes because it's, it's like, well, why would I, you know, why, you know, if I can just go to this one spot and just shoot one, you know, why would I not do that? You know, and there's and there's there's a, there's a lot to be a lot to be said for that, but uh, um, I, I think as, as, you, as you as you go, as you yeah as you as you grow as you grow in your hunting and your and your and your love for it, you start wanting. If you I, I, I personally to me, if you love hunting, then you, then you want something more than just pulling the trigger on something. Yeah, you want to you want to hunt, you want to go on a pig hunt, not a pig shoot. Yeah, and pulling the trigger um, sometimes is a lot of fun. Sure, it is. I've Absolutely, done it. I've done it I've done too. It, but I don't want to. I'm not going to keep doing it. Right. Yeah. Maybe that. Maybe just, and maybe that's <laughs> it. Yeah. There's a there's a balance to it, right? Yeah. White balance. Yeah, white balance. Hey. White balance. Something I don't have. <laughs> I do. Yeah, we did that yeah. earlier, but I have Whitney. You do. You also, do. so I'm yes. I'm trying to. My co-host accomplish. has a, a picture of Whitney Houston on yes. his. His ample buff chest. She's one of my favorites. Oh, Is she Whitney. saving all her love for you? I, Was she? I hope so. I love Whitney. <laughs> I had a Celine Dion night. The other oh, really? Night. Yeah, and I decided I'm going to go to Vegas. And watch oh, Celine man. Dion. <laughs> Did you see Celine, because Celine Dion? How? Okay, listen, there's fans uh, of Celine Dion. There's like true fans. And then there's me who's like, I don't get it. But the amount that I don't get it makes me just want to go experience with the people who are yeah, crazy what over it. That's what makes me, makes it fun for me. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I can, I can like, see Like, there's that. an entertainment value of it's not about exactly seeing Celine or Celine, Celine. It's about seeing her fans. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Like I gotta go do that. What 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 are these what are these people seeing? I've got to I've got to experience what these people are experiencing. I, and I'm gonna learn the songs and I'm gonna sing them at the top That's of my right. lungs and just <laughs> like there's an entertainment value there, for sure. But I'll never have a Celine Dion, you know, album yeah. or anything. Or, you don't want me to sing the theme to Titanic? You should. Too, so. No, I mean you should. <laughs> you definitely should end the podcast with I, I, a I, solo I, song by you. I have to I have to look up so, something because yeah. I don't know if I know enough words to um, to the song um, <laughs> to to, to do word? it. Uh, but uh, um, let's see here. There's a whole group of people. There's Celine. There's there's what's the guy's name? Michael uh, Bublé. No, <laughs> he's sort of in there, but Montgomery. No, what's his name? He he was with uh, the Doobie Brothers. He was with uh, the, oh Michael McDonald. <laughs> Michael McDonald, exactly. He's 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 one of them for sure. Um, there's a group of people who I just don't really understand, but at the same time, I'm kind of fascinated by them. Like at their existence and at their fans. <laughs> okay, do yeah, it. Well, great, great, grateful dead fan. Are you, are you a grateful dead person? No, not really. Yeah, I'm not either. I can get into some other stuff, but not really. <laughs> you have to hold it next to the microphone, Mark. Let's take the breath. This is how we're ending. Picture, yes. picture Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> clinging to a life. Life, uh, picture of breathy Canadian floating door. Is that what she is? In the ocean? Is she can see you. Yeah. That's how she knows. Wait, what pictures are they showing? Go on. Yeah. Oh, is this actually the Titanic scene? Huh? Parts of it. Oh. It's so really. If you have to add if, significant if, value to this, if, if, this there, if, there, if, if there was ever a person I wanted to see drown, it would be Leonardo DiCaprio. I haven't, I haven't necessarily. Are you a Leo? Are you a Leo? Like your, uh, yeah, I, I Leo? guess I'm too. I don't know. I, I'm too old. You know, glowing up with Clint Eastwood and yeah. Burt Reynolds, and then well, let's getting Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio shoved in my face. I can see. All right, he put in some other things. I, I mean, I he's been it. in some good stuff. Yeah, a couple yeah, things, yeah, for sure. Departed was good. Yeah, that was that was a good. There was a lot. That was an all-star cast that in was, that movie. Yeah. That was an excellent movie. Yeah. Titanic. Nah. I mean, my heart will go on. Not so. Bad. So, this is the breathy Canadian that you wish to see, huh? You, you had to, I'm gonna go watch her. I'm I'm all in. You're all. Are in? you kidding me? Yeah. I I, I took uh, Michelle. We went and saw uh, Brooks and Dunn and Reba McIntyre in Las Vegas. How was that? That was a redneck good time. I paid I paid good money for our tickets and we got it pretty close. And uh, um, <laughs> and uh, um, I, I, I was it was it was it was a good performance. So. Um, uh, um, no, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna I, I watch Celine Dion. I have to just experience this <clears throat> weirdness, basically. Okay, is it, Are all of her songs like that? Does she have any songs that aren't like that? I've never heard any of her music. You've that never I, heard that I any know of. of you know you have you just don't know it. That's amazing. You just have the song we listen to now. Reba. Oh. <laughs> We're breaking so many copyrights. Are we, we're rules. breaking copyrights. I, I have no idea how I, this, if this I, is. If this I'm, just, is I'm just listening to my fun. I'm, I could be on hold. Yeah. I could be on hold. I liked Reba in seventh this grade. Is, this is a duet she did with uh, Linda Davis here. I think you have to be adding significant a, a significant personal take to this in order for us to plan <laughs> to use this in our <laughs> videos. Do you need to be analyzing it hmm. or something? I don't know. You might just have to turn that right off. Yeah, I might have to. Um... I thought you were going to sing Celine Dion. See, I thought that's where, where we were going here. I, like, I'm proud to say that I know uh, on your I, I know a lot of music to a lot of songs, but I, c I cannot sing one full line of a Celine Dion song. What song can you sing a full line of Mark? Yes.
It's a good question. <laughs> Thinking of he's working up an appetite. Looking forward to a little afternoon delight. Rubbing sticks and stem <laughs> together makes the sparks ignite. And the thought of loving you is getting so exciting. Sky rockets in flight. Brrr, afternoon, afternoon delight. delight. <laughs> afternoon delight. <laughs> there. Amazing. There, that's a good one. Wow. All right, Charles. Now it's your turn for for a, a line from a song. Gosh, a line from I don't know if I can do it right now. Yeah, last, like, last time you were on the highway, I'm night under pressure. Radio. When you're listening to radio, you can sing them. Yeah. You can, you weird. Can, you can sing them all day long. But now I can't. I, I I mean, they're out there. I just don't. The uh, truth is out there. How do I harness that right now? Um, <laughs> I don't know what song I can sing. <laughs> What song can I sing? I don't know. Um, I don't think there's any. I'm sure you guys can pull off some Willie Nelson. Under pressure. <laughs> Surely. Yeah. No, there's certainly some Willie Nelson songs. Georgia. Georgia. That, that I'm getting. Friends in yeah, low places. Re- How about really, that one? That's, that's Garth. Like yeah, that. that's uh, Garth Brooks. Yeah. Oh, Brooks here, and Dunn. I, I, you got to hold I, it closer. I, I can imitate. Br- here, let me see if I can imitate Brooks and Dunn here for you. Let me try here. <laughs> How am I sounding? Am I doing okay? I think I'm sounding okay here. Sound great, Mark. Wow. When did you... Uh, I didn't know that you could do this. Clear more clo- <laughs> Imagine if Mark was really singing for us. Like, he just had that talent. Okay, all right, I, I, I'm getting into it now. <laughs> Amazing. It's been most every night yeah. beneath the yeah. night of a neon moon. Yes. See, you couldn't even tell where the music stopped and I started, could you? I couldn't, no. I, <laughs> did, has it stopped? <laughs> it it, hasn't, it I, doesn't. The, exper- the, the experience yeah. is saying that it's seamless. Even the guitars are still playing. Even the guitars. I mean, the people that are listening out there right now. The, they don't even know. They, wow, that was... Uh, did, did Mark stop the music and he just keep singing? I mean... Or was there even music in the first place? Was there even place? music in the first place? Or was that just Mark the whole time? It was obviously Mark the whole time, folks. Are people even still with us at this point? Uh, or have they given oh, up? I, I think they've given Mark up still thinks up. this is live. Well, Ryer told me to keep going. I did, because I'm... I'm trying so to get we, to the, yeah, weird, we got, the weird stuff. Well, now we're finally getting here, so we have to continue with more weird things. Hopefully, you can just edit this. This, 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 <laughs> yeah, this, this is for this is for everyone's uh, three-hour drive home from somewhere. Yeah, from somewhere. From, from somewhere. Where? We might need more whiskey for this. Yeah. This is Joe, how long are Joe Rogan podcasts? Three hours. Three at least. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I think two and a half to three. All right. Well, I do this, love Joe Rogan podcasts. Yeah. Very prepared. Very. Well, Joe's a very smart, smart man. Yeah, I think hey, so. but have you tried DMT? And I, I know, right? So, Mark doesn't get that let's joke. Talk about, let's talk about let's talk about let's talk about DMT. I've been fascinated. <laughs> okay, you know that was a meme joke. Yeah, I made a meme joke. Uh, I've been fascinated recently. <laughs> I watched Joe wrote, <laughs> last night. So apparently, my wife and I drank a lot a few nights ago. And allegedly, yeah, allegedly, she allegedly. woke me up at. I don't know. Let's just say it was three in the morning, yelling, uh, throwing things. And I'm like, what's going on? She couldn't find the remote. And there was a scary movie on. She hates scary movies. She scared the death of movies like such as Alien or um, any scary movie, really. But Alien's a, a good a good example. And so she woke up in the middle of the night. And it was somehow my fault that there was a scary movie left on the TV. Of course, it was your fault. Of course, it was my fault. Her fault. She's like, where's the remote at? And I'm like, why don't you just get up and turn the TV off? So anyway, she gets up and leaves and sleeps on the couch in the living room. I find the remote on her bedside table. And I'm just like, God, why did she wake me up? Because now I'm mad because I woke up and we were drinking the night before. So you get that sugar high kind of thing. So Mm -hmm. once you wake up, you can't really go to sleep. Mm-hmm. So then you're up. So as she was waking up, she balled up all the sheets and stuff and everything mm-hmm. else. So I took that balled up <sighs> sheet, went out into the living room and threw it at her face. And I called her a shithead. And I said, by the way, 
BTW the remote control <laughs> is was on your side, side of the bed. And I went back to bed. Anyways, the next day she explained it. She was like, I drank a lot. I'm like, you're pretty <laughs> cute when you drink a lot. Because she doesn't do it a lot at all. She's a very, very lightweight drinker. And it's like twice a year where I can actually get her to drink. Um, what were we talking about? DMT. DMT. So apparently that night when DMT. I came home from this party, we were watching. We had a UFC party, Ultimate Fighting Championship. I love watching. Is that UFC. what UFC stands for? Ultimate Fighting Championship. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I never, heard, I never heard of that. And um, he's lying to you. Do you watch? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. Don't you, did you watch uh, and Ganu? Yeah. And uh, that was weird. K- was Cain Velasquez question. hit? So I. So yeah. I was trying to look at the different. He. Yeah. He he didn't argue with it. He so said today I got to. I watched different angle videos. Uh, was it the uppercut? Ganu gave him an uppercut. Yeah, just, that that was right. That it had been that's uppercut. really what made his leg buckle. Right, because that's uh, what I thought he dro- he collapsed on that leg. He tweaked his leg, but he collapsed on that leg because he got hit with that uppercut. That's what I thought. I think it's one of those fights where if they were the fight, you know, ten times. It's going to be 10 different fights. Yeah. I mean, Cain Velasquez is, he, yeah, has, he, he had bone spurs in his spine. Yeah. So he hasn't fought in three years. Yeah. But no, the guy was an amazing, amazing fighter. Amazing champion. But yeah. I, he is. I would love to watch them fight again just because. Yeah. I feel, I feel yeah. a little bit, I feel a bit chipped. Yeah. Um, but it, even though it was free, because no, yeah, it, it was ESPN, free. Yeah. So that's good. I'm a Cerrone fan. I love Cowboy Cerrone. Uh, what a great, entertaining. Amazing, and, and the ass whooping he put on that young guy. Did you see that last one? That he, he, the guy was talking all that smack coming in, and he and, and he came out, and the guy came out charging and threw a few on started, but Cerrone just patient and then just started, just worked his ass over and then knocked him out with that kick. That, that kick seemed like a different man to me. Yeah, like every fight you're fighting a different man, so mm-hmm. it's hard to uh, quantify that because you know put him up against the best, and he might just age is not. It's like in Ghana, in Ghana yeah. who just wasted Cain yeah. Velasquez. He he fought um uh Stipe Stipe Miosic and yeah. Stipe just did thumped him yeah. And Ganu didn't it was like he he didn't had fight never it. fought before. Yeah he yeah he didn't fight against so, that black beast either. Um but uh one thing for sure is I, I oh, to me against, that I can uh, see yeah yeah the beast what's his yeah. name? Uh Derek. Yeah. What's his last name? What an entertaining fight. Yeah. In his underwear. Great, was My balls was hot. Yeah. <laughs> balls were, that, 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 was, that was great. It, that got him. A, those, those comments alone got that got him a championship fight against Cormier, which I don't think he deserved. But, uh, um, I don't think he did either. Uh, um, but certainly age is not your friend. In the octa, I mean, there's certain people that defied it, like uh, Randy Couture. Randy Couture yeah. My uh, wife has a crush on him. Yeah, by the way, but, but be, yeah, but being amongst you, but man, you just get slow. You don't, I mean, you know, you know, having to watch Ken Shamrock and a lot of and Chuck as you get older, you just, you know, the will is there and the skill is there, but you're half a or a whole step off or something like that. And, and 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 you just well he got caught well you got caught because you can't freaking react and your you, chemical makeup your is chemical makeup different. is different your 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 testosterone is different yeah. your human gro- growth hormone is different everything yeah. is is di- is different about you and and um you know like I say Randy Couture was at, when, when Randy fought up to the very end. There was a new class of fighters coming in to the heavyweight division yep. when 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 Randy got out of it. You know, he fought Tim Sylvia and beat Simpson. But then the Brock Lesnar's came in and all yep. these monsters that have a hard time making weight at 265 pounds and 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 with great still skills to go in it. And Randy Couture, he could fight at 205. He had the held the championship at 205, spanking Tito Ortiz's butt. Um, uh, uh, you, you know, and 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 great fights with Chuck Chuck Liddell. Um, you know, being able to make the two hundred five 
you know, weight class, uh, relatively easy, you know, and then of course Cormier does it. Cormier, you know, makes the Cormier looks fat at 205 still. Yeah. He looks like he could fight at 185 pounds. Well, of course he could. If he, if he cut all that, but I don't think, I don't, I don't think, yeah, I, I just don't think it's not a part of his, he, he's an interesting yes. guy. I, you know, he's never going to shirk the, the John, John Jones. Jones. Yeah. I'm a John Jones fan because yeah, the guy is a fighter and he just, I don't care about, I don't care about, he, he hasn't been beat, you know, well, he lost once at some point, but He's Cormier has never beat him, and uh, Gustafsson never beat him, and and what a good fight that was! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Part, he's the first one, yeah, you know, no, that was a great fight. Um, he, he Jones Cormier, curb stomped his ass, Cormier Cormier knows that too. yeah, but but he shouldn't feel bad about it. I mean, everyone's lost to Jones, you know, Jones is a freaking freak of nature. When he came in, he beat um, Leoto Machida. Mm-hmm. He beat Rashad Evans, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He beat Rashad. Yeah. yeah. He beat uh, uh, Quentin he, Rampage Jackson. He like the yeah. list that he's gone through. Yeah. No. He 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 beat the he beat the who's who's who. Pretty freaking crazy. Yeah. That guy's got genetics. I mean, his he, brother's he, he, an NFL. Yeah, player. NFL player. Yeah. No, he's he, he's great. I I I almost in some ways I feel like he's cheated us because without his off the ring antics and without the doping allegations or things like that, I feel he used that to, he'd be you know, better. He'd be better. <laughs> you know, right. Yeah. It, it, it's like, I feel like Barry Bonds, yeah. like Barry, Bo right. it, it, if Barry Bonds didn't have the steroid allegations against him, he'd still be a first. It, it, if, yeah. if he just continued on with his career, he'd be a first ballot hall of famer. Yeah. First Bell hall of famer it, it, to, to, I mean, some people have this thing against about yeah. first ballot, but 90 percent of people would would have given if if Barry Bonds' career just e extended out what it was. Hall of Fame, and and that's how I feel. John jo John Jones was his his athleticism, his ability, and everything was is uh, you know uh, unfortunately was 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 tarnished by his uh, by what what happened out of the ring. Yeah, no, it's all right. UFC is the, the the one of the most exciting things. Um, it's probably the most exciting. It, it is the most exciting thing for me to watch on TV. Hundred percent. I think there's the only nothing, thing that's keeping it from the next level is all those fighters knowing that I could go in and kick their ass whenever I wanted. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, I like that. It yeah. Came out of nowhere. <laughs> Who's this guy? But, but uh, hey. um. You know, whatever, uh, Stipe, what, you know, uh, doesn't uh, matter. Uh, uh, Cormier, Kirby. anyway, you know, Anderson Silva, if he's looking to pick up a little extra pay per view bucks because he needs to, a good headline fight and, and needs to crank up the, the pay per views. Uh, I, I met uh, Connor, Connor McGregor, of course, I curb stomped that little Irish ass. I love you know, it. it's um, you know, I, I I think I think you know right now they're on ESPN, an okay network, but if you know if they wanted to go to Fox, <laughs> NBC, ABC, CBS, you know, main you know ma mainstream Rupi like that, like that, Mark Rupi outdoors, yeah, uh, you know they could put me headlining one of those one of those fights, take them to the big leagues, take them, you know, uh, um, uh, you know Dana. Uh, Dana White, instead of making, uh, you know, uh, uh, forty million office office sales, you know, had I been in there, probably would have, you know, made eighty million office sales. Well, he doubled. He would have doubled. He would he would have doubled it. Mm -hmm. So, but they're pretty much all afraid to step in the ring with me. But that's I'm I'm okay with that now. Have, so in um, hey Charles, yeah, uh, make sure you just you move that microphone if you want. This Her way. Yeah, or right here. I'll oh, just yeah. sit right here. That's perfect. Um, this moment's been brought to you by Potty Training by Ryder Porter. I've always been fascinated with um, mixed martial arts or just comp, human combat, whatever, you know. Um, 
anyways, in October of this of 2018, I finally decided, honestly, probably it's been 10 years since I've been thinking about it and have, you know, rolled around with guys who've been in, um, in, uh, jujitsu or whatnot. I finally was like, okay, I'm going to start doing jujitsu. And then, mm-hmm. so I started jujitsu and it's amazing. And it's the most humbling thing ever. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm good in some areas cause I'm physically aggressive, I guess for my size and different things I've done, been in the military and played in NCAA rugby division one rugby for university really? of Michigan. Cool. And, um, but when you get into jujitsu and you go up against guys who are whatever, 30 pounds heavier, 30 pounds lighter, lighter man, man, or not guys, girls yeah. who weigh 130 pounds, but they have been doing it for 10 years. You get humbled really quickly, and I do not care how strong you are or what you think. It's repetition, and it's and it's and it's a chess game. And there, it's a chess you, you're, you're you're playing checkers. They're playing chess. It's unreal, yeah. and it's fascinating to me. I keep going back, and I, I just I I love it. I've been doing it since October, and and there isn't, and I'm. It's actually so I'm forty. I'm like great, awesome time to start human combat at age 40 you're that's, 18 years younger than me that's awesome my shoulder is kind of hurt right now <laughs> my my elbows have been hurt from being arm barred and sure things like that and it it really sucks and i'm not really sure what it is that i'm doing because now i'm thinking what's my body shape going to be like when i'm 50 hey sting and put pedal pedal to the metal on that stuff i mean i I, I've gone I've gone through that trend. So I trained with Eric Shingu, who started um, the Diaz Boys training. Actually, what? what I didn't. Okay, I don't know any of this. Yeah. So so Eric Shingu. Believe it or not, this is a story Eric, I haven't Eric, heard. Eric, 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 Sh- Eric Shingu was it was trained by uh, the Gracies and and uh, the Diaz brothers uh, started a lot of their training with Eric Shingu, and I trained with Eric Shingu. So I used to work out with him. And we we had some we had some well, I don't want to say not very epic. They were epic to me just because yeah. my headgear was smattered in my blood yeah. as he center punched me in the face. But, uh, you know, re- uh, rolling with him was like rolling with a 160-pound carp. Yeah. You know, it just, there's a, you know, you, you're just not, you're just not getting a grip on that. And every, every mistake you make, which is basically every move you make, yeah. just is getting you... <laughs> you know, yeah. t- tighter and tighter, and you know, and in de- 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 But he he's got a um, Eric now. He's he's got a black belt in, in Gracie Jiu Jitsu, and uh, um, but uh, um, uh, so I, I would say at uh, I'm 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 about to turn fifty eight and having you know rolled a little bit in Jiu Jitsu and done ultra marathons and and stuff like that and. Man, just just keep ha- just keep hammering that sucker because I I keep I think Cam I, Haynes I, in that yeah keep ha- yeah how old is Cameron Haynes forty eight yeah he's he's still he's still a puppy um no so I I mean I I'm glad I finally yeah um, don't don't take your foot off the pedal on that because I I guess what, I guess what I'm saying up. I'm I'm glad I finally manned up and did it because yeah. I I had rolled against. It was it was stupid. I I just didn't I didn't have any education on I didn't have any experience on on how jujitsu was like if if you uh, so one of my friends in in uh, Michigan he's trained for God I don't know twenty five years now but he's a black belt in jujitsu and one day I don't know whatever I was like whatever let's let's freaking wrestle whatever you know right now because I have some wrestling and it was so stupid I was like I I don't understand what you're doing I can't do anything against you it's like I'm wrestling a freaking brick wall and ever since that day I've been intrigued 100 percent intrigued and yeah. fascinated so anyways, I'm thinking uh, of start I'm thinking of starting it again because I just did it I just did it for a while not 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 long enough to even advance in any in, in any belts you know i just did a few a few months with him but we didn't do straight jiu-jitsu we he, he, we did so we did i guess you'd call it more mixed martial arts so yeah. we did stand-up stuff we worked on boxing 
we worked on wrestling, we worked on jujitsu, we worked on stand-up stuff. Uh, you know, so we didn't just just con just concentrate on that stuff. Yeah. But uh, I'm I'm thinking of starting it again because um, I just started doing cr CrossFit again. I've done a couple a couple workouts, and I tell you what, getting why I'm saying is don't quit is starting over now at 58. I haven't done CrossFit. I, I think I did it six years ago. Starting it again at 58 is way different than starting it at 52, and and holy crap, 58 years old, and now all of a sudden you're going to get down and start doing burpees and flop on the floor and jump back up yeah. and then jump up on a box. <laughs> it's freaking tough, and yeah. and, and I, you know it was it was it was you know, kind of personally insulting to myself to see this shell of a former uh, what 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 I I used to be go, uh, going through that so. I'm saying don't don't take you know don't don't take the don't take the foot off foot off the pedal yeah. until you freaking want to be done until your body says I'm done until, yeah. until something tells you that you can't do it anymore either your mind or your body yeah. until then don't just stop just because you think yeah I don't know how much more I can do don't yeah. stop until either your mind or your body screams at you do not do this anymore you know yeah. I, I would say because I, I I wish I'd kept up on some of my ultra marathon things. You know, I I did some fifty mile, some fifty bunch of fifty k's and fifty miles, and I tried a hundred miles and I didn't get. I got like sixty six miles, and and then I stopped. And damn it, I wish I'd I, I wish I'd I kept going and 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 bit off that hundred mile one. And now if I'm gonna bite off that hundred mile one, shit, I'm gonna be nearly sixty years old when I when I do that and. That's a little bit harder, yeah. And because uh, I just don't want to do a flat one, you know, I want to do one in the mountains sure. and, and and like the Bighorn one, the one I'd want to do foot? the big no, the Bighorn, Bighorn, okay. the Bighorn. Is, so there's seventeen thousand feet of elevation gain in the you know in the or elevation change, elevation gain in that, and uh, you know it's a it's a it's a butt kicker, <laughs> and uh, and yeah. uh, and so thinking of you know I'd probably have to enter that now when I'm sixty and. How many sixty-year-olds are doing that? Uh, you know, there's a few, and they're pretty badass yeah. guys. But all I'm saying is, don't none of you, none of, none of you out there who are still listening two hours later, do not take your foot off the pedal. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not taking it. And I'm going to be in competitions. You know, are I'm, you? I'm going to. Yeah, 100 percent am. Um, no, I I certainly want to um, increase my repetition you know my my um my practice you yeah know, with doing it and the you know my sensei or whatever it is they're called that's the thing i don't really know all the like the rules as far as that goes but anyways there he's of gracie lineage and mm. you know he has um it's it's just great it's a it's an awesome group of guys and mm. girls and i i learn a lot um and and i bring a lot of energy also to it which is cool you know, it's fun to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, cause I'm, I'm super excited. I think, I think for a 40 year old, I'm from, for your average 40 year old that I'm not your average 40 year old, I yeah. guess I would say, you know, and I like that. Yeah. I like that about myself, I guess. And I would, I, I think you're, you, you think the same way. Cause how old are you? Yeah. So I'm 50, I'll be 58 here pretty soon. That's awesome. I mean, it really is. I mean, I, that's, I, you know, I want to be like that when I'm 58. I really do. <laughs> well, I'm I'm trying, trying to be a better 58 year old version of myself right now. Yeah, you know, I, I've always, um, you know, kind of waited for an event or a season to start getting. So, like, you know, a hundred mile race or a 50 yeah. mile race, sorry, or elk season's coming up. But now here it's February, and I've never got ready for elk season in February, but. I'm tired of being, I'm, I always come in f fat and out of shape at this time, you know, at this time of year. And, and of course my fat and out of shape, I'm still a decent walker. So, you know, I can, I can, I can still, yeah. you know, most people come hunting and I can, I can still walk their fanny to the ground, but not where I'd want to be. But, uh, I, I, I'm, I want to be, uh, you know, I, 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 I want to, I, in 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 six in six weeks, I want to I want to be in 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 fighting shape again. Mm -hmm. That's great so. to have that mentality. 
It really is. Cheers to that. Cheers. One. Well, Breyer, we still haven't come up with anything way out there. We kind of did, sort of. We we, we have politics. Aliens. 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 I want to hear. I want to hear some talk about aliens. Maybe something about Sasquatch. Believe in them. I don't believe in aliens or Sasquatch. Okay. Well, I guess not that one then. Okay. Scratch those two off. You're over. Neither of you guys believe in aliens at all? Nope. Nope. Zero well, percent chance. You don't no. think in the entire universe there could be another civilization out there? No. There could be, but yeah, there, there, could be. There, could, there, there could be, but zero plus zero is still zero. Yeah. I mean, you go out there, the moon. Okay, there's nothing on there. All right, there's nothing on Jupiter. There's nothing on Pluto. There, is there anything on Uranus? Not right now, no. No. So, so there's nothing on, nothing on Uranus. So there's no, there, there's nothing on all these spots. There's no Klingons on Uranus. There's not there's nothing. Nope, there's nothing. So zero plus zero, silly zero. You can go out to the next solar system. Next, you can go out billions all your way. I mean, zero plus zero can still equal zero, right? That is true. But the probability, what that the more what? you explore, heathen, heathen. <laughs> Why would you call me a heathen? <laughs> What if I said to be classified as a heathen? <laughs> so loosely. I so, okay, think. so let me put it into terms okay. that maybe you'll understand, Mark. Thank you. Say you have a large area of ground. Oh. He, he's making Star Wars noises now. Oh. Frankly, I thought we would get to this point in the podcast earlier, but it's taken us two hours and 20 minutes. To get you. You're going to edit this, though, so only the good parts. No, I'm not editing <laughs> No, this, this is just going to run. Ah, okay. No, I don't edit this. <laughs> the, the drunk, the drunk hunter if I, podcast if, runs. If I, I would, if I would have had to edit this, we would have done it very differently. I ain't paid to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating waffles right now. Actually, if anybody and in the curious, morning, I'm, I'm making waffles. waffles. That. I yeah, I eat them all. I'm sorry. Okay, what movie is this from? And in the morning, I'm making waffles. Shrek. Bing. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's just Donkey. Been long Donkey. Donkey. Yeah. You're going the right way for a smart bottom. <laughs> All right, go. With aliens. Okay, convince Large us. area. Okay, Mark, Con just because, okay, so say you go and you're going to go hunt a new area, and there's a large, expansive area. Okay. Just because you search five feet of this entire range, are you going to say that there's no pigs here? No, you're going to keep searching. And it's highly likely that there's pigs here because there's so much area for pigs to be, and there's good habitat for pigs. And there's a lot of reasons why pigs would like being here. And I have evi I've had right. evidence. I have evidence of the pigs. Uh, I'll, I'll, I've I've picked a lot of places where I looked over five square feet of ground, and because I was had some familiarity with the rest of the ground, that I knew there was no pigs there. Yeah, but hold up. Let me just. Then, so the the difference is there's evidence of pigs, but. Where's the evidence of aliens? Right. We don't have that yet. But what I'm saying oh, is. Oh, we don't have <laughs> hold that on, hold yet. On, hold on. We don't have that yet. You're making up a species that. You're, you're, that, making, you're that, making up a species. We know all that. I'm saying is it's highly probable, I think, that somewhere in the universe there is aliens. That's what I'm saying. So I'm saying that we've explored a very but, small but portion you, of the first, universe. First so that'd you, be like looking down at your feet first you're and going, willing to oh, throw there's out, no pigs First, you're willing to throw out your five square foot thing and, there's, I, and there's no pigs. Are you, are, I haven't are, thrown that out are, yet. Are, are, are you willing to throw that out and say that was, uh, I was stupid? I haven't thrown that out yet. Just to I, clarify, I, I really what you're really saying is evidence of any other life. Is it really what you're... I mean, that's... You could. Just to make it sound, you know. Any other Because aliens, um, people like... They, my, they, it could be a microbe. There could they, be a small. There, there, there's the smallest, teeniest microbe of some sort qualify for life out there. Because alien just really means a foreign to whoever it is that you're speaking about. Phone home, right? It would be cool if you phone was out there. home, Ryer. Phone. Home. What I'm what I'm saying is I think that we haven't explored enough to even Yoda. You say Yoda. that we have enough evidence to disprove. Stupid that there is life out there. Intelligence you don't have. Yeah, but I could come up with like anything in my imagination and say, but you can't disprove it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. You can't prove a negative. Is that yeah. what they always say? I don't know. Disprove it. Yeah, can't disprove. I personally like to think that there's 
there's a lot of universe out there and there's a lot of places where life could exist in those places. And the more that we study, the more that we see that these places, earth-like places may exist that could Maybe. harbor life. And so if we extrapolate that over the expanse of the universe, it seems as if there's a lot of places that life could be. So I think it's more probable that there is life out there than that. Zero plus zero. Zero plus zero. Personally, I think that. I, so number one, I believe in. Do you know if you play a Beatles a album backwards, it, 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 it says rare, stupid, rare, stupid. You know what I started stupid, listening rare, to is stupid. albums in super slow speed. And it's actually really cool. Really? It's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Like, Vinyl albums? Yeah. Like I, I listened to David Bowie's Heroes yesterday, um, the song at, uh, I don't know, it was like 36 minutes long, and usually it's three minutes, and it's really interesting. <laughs> wow. to the, do you have to like take acid to do this? It, you could, but it's also music to listen to at airports, Okay, which is, I don't even get into that. But anyways, um, so I believe in a god i believe in a creator um and i believe in it in a in a savior for all intents and purposes but i think humans and earth um are very unique and very special and are a, are a the most unique uh creation so that's why i don't believe in aliens because i don't think there needs to be because i think there's so much to be explored within ourselves from an omnipotent creator that holds no time or space. That's a lot that I just said. Right yeah, that's there. a pretty good answer. I like that. There, but there's, there's no, there does not need to be aliens. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's perfectly fine if all that's out there and there's no, nothing, nothing out there. If God, God you know, he just, you know, it, I'm not he, saying he was, there isn't he, a he purpose. Able, he, he was, yeah, there is definitely a purpose. I think God definitely has a purpose, at least for, for us. For all of that that's out there is what I mean. For yeah. all of that eternity, basically, because space is eternity. And, and, and balance, it's a whole thing. I'm, I'm sure he threw it all out there. That's obviously the moon, the planets, our sun, all have to do with us staying, you know, that he that he created us in a perfect position to keep our atmosphere and everything. If we were a few miles off balance, this whole thing doesn't work. It's not even a the, few the, miles. This, this, right, <laughs> yeah. right. The, this whole, this right. whole thing doesn't I, work. I so our solar system, and then which goes around other, it has to do with the gravity of other solar systems, which has to do with the other gravity. I mean, all this thing has to be, I mean, it's all a big gyroscope that keeps, you know, our thing in, in place. And, uh, um, they just to, to, to me same thing. To me, they just they just doesn't have to be aliens. And if if someone shows me some real signs to aliens someday, uh, um, that's great. But I, I don't I don't feel any giant need to. So say somebody does it. come up with proof for aliens. Does that how does that affect this view that you have now? Well, I'll I'll put it this way. I've I've, I've thought of those like when people talk about ghosts or whatever else the, the second i see a ghost my whole world changes my whole world changes you know the second i see um aliens um my whole world view changes 100 percent, certainly um i don't know what it would change to you but it would certainly change that's 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 a guarantee um but i i i feel like i've i've been in enough i've almost called upon <laughs> i've almost invited things to happen and i've spent so many nights in strange places and things where i'm just you know where i don't i i that I time we I woke up in that bang, bangkok brothel yeah remember that yeah. holy cow but that was just humans <laughs> that was just humans being weird and that's like <laughs> we're the weirdest like yeah. for real and and i and i think we're the most um confused and curious and i and i think that's why we also create things not to you know i'm not trying to offend or insult i, I get people, the curiosity but 
I think aliens are an attempt to overlook what's directly mm, right in front your of your eyes. Me. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, I think I think there's something to that. Yeah, and, and I'm perfectly I'm perfectly good with with uh, with all a lot of the stuff is God explaining to me when it's time. You know, some of it I can I can never understand, you know, and and you know all the miracles and things that happened in in the Bible. Oh, you, can you believe that? Can you believe this? Can you really believe you separate seas, fish could fall, a person blah blah blah? I'm go and I think, well, if it's the same Creator that wished the universe yes. into existence, right. wished this planet in existence, wished the seas, wished the atmosphere, wished people, wished the animals wish those things in existence it's not very hard it's it, i mean if i if i can believe that stuff yeah. be, believing that god parted the seas believing that god rose a dead man but uh, uh jesus you know rose a dead man, you know believing all that stuff is, is really not that really if, not that far reach if god is capable of this then he's capable right, of right, that. right. and uh, that's so crazy like almost the, the what you just said could have been the exact same words uh, out of my mouth. Yeah, that's that's the way that I feel about when people question. Okay, well, imagine for a second the existence of God. Imagine that that's true. Then what can you tell me isn't possible? Mm -hmm. That's the whole. That's the whole thing, right? Yeah, that's the whole thing. And exactly what you just said is so dead on. Yeah. Like a hundred percent. Yeah. You, you know, and my, yeah. you know, and people talk about, oh, how do you explain this? How do you explain the dinosaur? Blah, 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 this, and, and I go, okay. Say, 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 for instance, you you could say, well, I can kind of maybe I can believe the Adam and Eve thing, but I can't believe all you know the dino. What about the dinosaurs that exist and everything? Blah blah. And I go, okay. If if God put Adam on this planet. How, how, how old was Adam when he put Adam on this planet? Obviously, Adam, he did not put Adam here as, an, as, as a one-day-old infant. Right. He put him as probably, yeah. you guess, a, a, a man physical enough to take care yeah. of himself. He put a lion on the earth that was not a cub with his eyes closed. He was old enough to take care of himself, uh, maybe a few years old. So the he, earth he could put, have been put he, here. So when he put the earth here... Yeah. Uh, the, the earth exactly. So you're reading. You're reading my mind. <laughs> I, but 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 the, earth, but the but the but the so the earth. Uh, you know the human is 18 years. The lion is two years. The fly is two seconds. The um, the whale is eight years, and the earth is 60 million years yeah. or something. So when you look at Adam. As he was put on this earth, his growth plates were finished growing. Yeah. He had all his hair pattern, his teeth, his adult teeth. Everything resembled an 18-year-old person, but he was one second old. Yeah, right. I 100. Percent, that's, and he's one. Wow. He was. He was one. He was one second. He was one second old and appeared to be 18 years old. And so why wouldn't why wouldn't why couldn't God create an earth that was going yeah. all right it needs to hold all this stuff all the stuff needs to be happen to have an earth that can exist if we're making stuff up or if we're being imaginary or if it's real or if it's not that's the if if God is real and everything that we Attribute. claim he stands for then of course that's possible mm -hmm. right so it either is or it isn't. Right. And that's, yeah, yeah, no, I knew exactly what you were saying. Cause I've, I've thought about that so many times where, and I don't care how old the earth is. I can care less. I don't, I don't, but, I, I, that's one of those things I'll let God explain to me. And I can say, yeah, well, I think that, I think the earth's uh, only um, 15,000 years old, you know, and I die and God says, no, actually the earth is, is, uh, seven, is 700 million years old. I go, thanks God for explaining that to me. I was wrong. Well, we talk about, because we, we talk in terms of human timeline all the time, but if we try to intersect that with, with God's timeline, with the whole idea of that, of being a timeless, omnipotent being where time doesn't even exist, then that's where we get confused. And I also mm -hmm. think that's hard to, to 
explain that to anybody else as well. So if time doesn't exist to a being, when we're putting time to something, it becomes a strange debate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like what, what a weird, it's, it's mind blowing, yeah. you know, but what you just said is, is like, I couldn't have said it any better. It's exactly what, how I think about it. Yeah. God could have created the earth at 10 million years old. Yeah. All the pine trees are fully grown. Yeah. All the whatever, yeah. you know, you all, all the trees, boom, a tree. And you look at this, you look yeah. at this 300 foot uh, redwood and you're going, wow, look at that. Look at that 300 year old tree. No, yeah. look at that one second year old tree. Right. So it depends on height. Exactly. Right. So is that, is that weird enough for you, right? Ryer? Do, do we get, do we get off on weird enough things? Yet? Aliens. No, that's not too weird. It's not too weird. You, I don't but it's not too weird. Okay, you're fired. What is it you don't agree with? Because I'm not really. Well, like, what, what can yeah. you what can you not agree? Because I'm not or? saying anything is fact. No, I'm just yeah, saying uh, like you know maybe disagree would be wrong. Yeah. Um, different take. Am I? Yeah, I do have a different take. Uh, I tend to think that all of the processes that we see and observe and have scientifically observed through whatever scientific method that we have devised, which can obviously be flawed because we're science and science is science and it's wrong all the time humans are never wrong <laughs> um i i tend to think that that a creator story and a god is not mutually exclusive from science and i tend to think that some of some of these things almost point to the fact that there could be a god uh, more than they detract from it i guess my biggest example would be the big bang which is I, I don't know if it is as much anymore, but it used to be a large debate. People would say, well, you can't believe in the Big Bang if you believe in God because God created things. It wasn't this random bang in the universe. And so, but to me, what I, what I think personally is the Big Bang is just a, a theory describing that at one point there was nothing. And then in the next moment, there was a large explosion of matter and time and space were created in that moment. And to me, that points to, okay, well, something had to cause that. So it makes yeah. sense to me that God would have caused that. And then similarly, it makes sense to me that uh, that would have set in motion all of the processes needed to create an earth and to create uh, species on, on earth. And I, I don't think that you necessarily need to place it in time at 10 million years old. I think you can let all those things happen if you're God. And and let them play out in the human time frame that we we say that it is, or that we think that it is, and and let all these processes take place, and let you know the dinosaurs come and and die off, and let let these other species evolve from you know one thing to another. And I don't I don't think that detracts from from there being God. I think he could have set all that in motion easily enough. There's there's sure. I mean there's I mean the the Bible talks of different you know beasts and dragons and monsters and stuff like that the the, 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 yeah so you know who knows that's i'm i'm just i'm total i i'm 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 comfortable putting my speculation and i'm more comfortable letting god explain it to me later i don't think the big bang detracts from god at all no i, mean, I think it it sure it i i think the debate now is that it um it certainly doesn't have to you know that that could be a creator um event yeah the big I mean, bang you know yeah i mean do, do you want do you want to do you want to say i mean if you want if you want to argue that you know when god created you know the earth that before right just seconds before that he didn't create a big bang that all of a sudden sent everything you know uh, you know out out, out, yeah. out into there and that and that that's how it and and that's and that's how God, you know, when God's, when God, when we we're talking about the, the, the Bible, um, you know, we're just talking, we're just talking about the creation of earth. We're not talking about the creation of, you know, of, of everything else. Of course, you know, like it talks about the stars or everything of the universe, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, for sure though, you don't go from zero to point zero 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 one without somebody creating the zero 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 one 
something. Yeah, no, it's pretty good. You know, I mean, it's, got, it's, got, it's, got, it's some, something had to create something. There, there, there you know, it's, and there, there was like a, a professor of it was Harvard or Yale or or something like that, and back in the early 1900s, and he says, um, either the universe was created by a spontaneous um, uh, um, action of of energy, or was created by a supernatural being. Since we know that a spontaneous creation of energy cannot happen, it had to happen by a spontaneous being. But because I refuse to bring, uh, because I refuse to believe in a superior being, I'm going to choose to believe what cannot happen and that there is a spontaneous creation of energy. So some people are so bent against believing in God that they will say, I know that this stuff can't happen, but because I do not want to believe in God, I will choose to believe what I know is impossible. But I would submit that a large reason why people choose to not believe in God are because of the people who say they believe in God. Sure. So the judgment falls on, it's not the band I hate, it's the fans. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So it, it and and that's and I think that's very sad. I I I mean that seriously. I think mm-hmm. that's very very sad. Um, and, and not on the person who chooses, to, of course, on the person who chooses to believe or not. But that's very sad because it's true. Mm-hmm. On um, the people who claim you know themselves to, to say whatever they are, you know, Christian or I'm a believer in God, and then. You and go on to, go right. and then they go on to live a life of whatever. Yeah, exactly. And do it just be, you so know, full of whatever. But so I think that has a lot of, to do with those types of decisions. You know, it's um, it, it's the same thing with with, with uh, racism. So racism. So this case lately of this actor who's saying that he was attacked by two white guys Jesse. with with mega hats and yeah. and everything and, and I don't know I haven't followed that much but yeah. is it turning out it's two black guys that it <laughs> attacked you like know. something like from Nigeria yeah from so, Nigeria so yeah Nigeria. first time so, an American so, scammed a Nigerian yeah, so, so right so you know, for, the <laughs> emails yeah <laughs> so the 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 the, the shame in it on that is it, it sets everything back because there is problems with it, you know yeah. you know we you know uh the, you know black people in inner cities feel how they feel for you know we can argue this or that or crime or what whatever but they feel you know centered or focused on or abused by the police for for certain reasons certain things happen whether what comes to first the chicken or, or the egg but whatever there's a large segment of our population that feels like the process is not is not for them, you know, and that's not healthy for you know for, you know you know for, for for a country. But every time some false racism thing happens like that, it sets you know it it it, it sets that argument b- backwards. So every time a Christian you know falls, it sets Christianity yeah, back, and it, and, it, and it's just Satan. You know, it's Satan attacking. Yeah. It, you know, it's Satan saying, you know, um, you know, you know, I'll attack these. You know, the Satan doesn't care about random idiots like me. You know, I, I'm, yeah, but you know, he's going to attack the higher, you know, the the, the higher profile people. But um, uh, humans are still humans. Yeah, it's, doesn't it's matter what humans, you call yeah. yourself. And uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, so all, all, all these good causes you know, routinely get set back by, you know, by people, um, you know, by, by, un, by unfortunate, in, in, you know, incidents, but it, it shouldn't, it shouldn't, uh, I don't know, unfortunately it shouldn't, you know, it detracts from the message, but it shouldn't. Right. We have to understand it, it almost in a way goes back to our government, con- government conversation about, you know, looking for the perfect answer. Instead of understanding that humans are, mm-hmm. are um, by nature at fault, basically, we're gonna, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
Um, so yeah, don't judge the <laughs> yeah the band by its fans. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> kind of a thing. Um, no, so that's, that's it's 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 always a amazing conversation to have. It's yeah, an interesting yeah. conversation. It is, and it's it's great to have a conversation with people that. Uh, we, I, we've I, never talked about it. No, I don't. No, we haven't. You and this, I have never. Yeah, talked we, about we have. We've anything. never had this conversation. I, no. I don't know. I know where know where Charles leans on this stuff. So everything. So all this is real spontaneous, and uh, and uh, it's just good to be able to have people that you can have a basic trust with, so you can say stuff and you yeah. can banner stuff back and forth. Now that was really profound. What you said about. Um, The, the two different subjects like it was almost like word for word how I would say well, it and I've never and I've I've never heard anybody else say it except for myself it's weird <laughs> like I, I bring yeah. that up a lot like I talk about that a lot just in thinking about it you know it's, it's a it's a great philosophical debate yeah it is all of this is yeah it, it really is um but that was really crazy I was like exactly <laughs> did he what say I was that I gonna say right now no, it's it, my wife will watch this, and I've said the exact same things to her. You know, just talking to yeah. her about it. It's really profound, actually. That, that you said the exact same thing. It's really weird. Cool. It's actually really weird. That's actually pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Ryer, I think it's weird, but it's actually it is, really is weird. It? Yeah. Have we done it yet? I think so. Okay. Well. Thank you all very much for watching or listening. This has been a long... Matter of fact, the first person that responds to this will send a swag package. You get a shirt, a or hat, have to a calendar, to a mug. What's that? You have to give them something to prove that they've made it this far. Okay, so... What, what, what do I do? A secret Is, word. Se secret word back... Well, they. I just said... Um, see, yeah. see, see, secret word, secret word, um, hashtag, they have to comment with a hashtag something. What? They, they won't know. Hashtag, the hashtag, the truth hashtag, is out there. Ha hashtag, yeah. what the heck did I just listen to? Hashtag, what the heck did I just listen to? That's the person who gets the Mark Grippy Outdoors swag, swag pack package. Hashtag, what the heck did I just listen to? Or watch. Or watch. But you have Hasht to use the hashtag. Hasht what the hashtag. Heck did I just what the heck to? did I just listen to? What the he ha heck did, did I just watch? Yeah. No, no, just the what the heck did I just listen to? What the heck did I just listen to? Yeah. Okay. You have All no right. hints, nothing. Hashtag so what somebody the heck who made it this far. To? What's the what's the counter? What are we at? We're at two hours, forty seven minutes, That's eleven it. seconds and counting. Sweet. Wow. That's, That's like a drive to Tahoe. Yeah. That's pretty much a drive up here. Yeah. That's more than a drive up here, yeah. Right, yeah. Probably about 20 minutes or so. It's about a drive in the Danger Ranger, I guess. I think people who are outside of us three will probably find it interesting. But when you listen like, kind of to yourself, too, it's like, what the hell? What are we yeah. What are we doing? It's, you know, if I was trying to drive across the Nevada desert, I'd kind of like, I, 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 I would have got in on this conversation. It's going to be a good conversation for yeah. people, I think. I'm yeah. sure. They're like, you know what? I learned... Some things, and then I just learned, we can, enjoyed some things. Well, we learned about pigs today. How uh, we, we got some, pigs. we got some good tips on sure. on hunting in general. We got politics, you know, politics. We got religion, presidents, all, all the, uh, all UFC, the things that you aren't supposed presidents to, yeah. uh, on the UFC. All the things that you aren't supposed to talk to about in hunting camp: religion and politics. Yeah, we talked about. Um, we didn't talk about turkey hunting. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Because I don't know anything about turkey hunting. I've killed one turkey with my bow. I haven't really, I haven't really hunted. I know I used one of those decoys on the front of your bow, and I snuck right up to the freaking turkeys and shot one. And I was like, "Well, why doesn't everybody just do that?" <laughs> <laughs> and it was a, it was a, a two-inch spurs, eleven-inch beer yeah. turkey. Only turkey, first turkey I've ever shot. Hmm. Might as well stop there. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Okay, quick. I'm good." I'm head to the coffee shop. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think we'll have to start putting a running a running timer on the bottom of our turkey experts, hunting videos. Yeah, pretty close, Mark, so that people know we'll, we'll no longer count like days. We'll just count how long till coffee. 
Yeah, maybe maybe we can it's, maybe it's, we can it's have we can have a shot of about the, four hours until coffee here. We can have a shot uh, of the and there's coffee no shot. Cookies. Coffee shop up in the corner, <laughs> and as the time goes by, the coffee shop keeps getting bigger, and the and our turkey hunting keeps getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> and pretty soon, we walk into the frame of the, of the coffee How shop. How does turkey hunting go? Is it how does it go for us? Well, normally here, we here, sit let me, in a blind. Let me tell you how it goes for us, and then we go we, to a coffee well, here, shop. Here, here's what happens: we go out. Ryer tries to film me setting up very unsuccessfully my pop-up blind, which I cannot figure out still how to do. Never. So, never. It doesn't never. matter what pop-up so, blind, so where we right. are, or how many times it, it, you set it, it up. are kind of crazy. It, yeah. It, it's a wrestling match. Pop, son of a bitch. Turn the camera on. Blah, 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 boom, boom. Finally. Normally he gets so frustrated. <laughs> he's like, you can stop filming. Yeah. You can freaking Something help me with this. Pr- pretty I much. need you to hold this. Yeah. He doesn't really know what he wants me to hold. He just, just knows holds, I, he yeah. needs to I, I know he that just knows he's in danger. Something and I can't do it. Yeah. So eventually somehow it pops up. And so the sweat stops rolling off my face. And, uh, and so we get it set up and we get it, and we get it staked, staked out in the, and the, and the mesh set up. And then we take the decoys out and we set it up and we hear gobbling because we always set up in good spots where there's gobbling. Well, no, you forgot the whole process of us figuring out where, where you're going to sit. And where I'm going to sit in the blind right. and trying to figure out where the okay. camera can be, which is always in the same place pretty much every every time. But we always have it to takes us about gym, 15 gym or 20 minutes. minutes. So <laughs> that's why we start this process is like two in the morning, and uh, and then I get my box calls because it's the only thing I'm capable of using, and and the and they're and they're and the turkeys are starting to make noise up in the trees, you know, and I start going. <laughs> And they gobble and I pretend like I'm a real turkey hunter. And I placed my two stupid decoys, my Jake and my hen decoy out in front of me. And we sit there and wait. Isn't that a real, isn't that a special hen turkey? Or the I've Jake? got a special hen for this isn't year. Is it the sweet got, lips or something? What no, you? I've got, that was Larry's sweet lips. Okay. Um, but I've got, I've got one this year. I've got wings and a fan and everything to put on one. Um, and uh, so then I go, snarp, 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 and they blah, 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 they garble from the trees, and I pretend like I'm a really good car, and all of a sudden we wait in the sun, you know, it starts graying up out, starting to start to get a light, and you're, and they come to the ground, and I pretend like I've called them out of the tree, because they were never going to come out of the tree unless I started calling, and they and they start coming our direction, uh, even though they've been coming that same direction for the last three weeks, but I pretend I snarp, 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 snarp. They're coming my <laughs> way because I've, I'm calling like hell. And, uh, and pretty soon they see my decoys and they come, boop, and they start fanning and, and striding and they turning sideways and, and coming through. And, and then they do one of two things at 40 yards, 50 yards, is they keep coming for me and... I shoot and hit or narrowly miss one, or they turn around and they start feeding off in another direction, at which time the clock st- strikes about 8 o'clock, and I say, screw this, let's go get something to eat. <laughs> that's <laughs> we it. Get out, we get out of the blind <laughs> and go to the coffee shop. Yeah, that, that, That's a typical Mark Group. Imagine if you treated elk hunting that way. I, I always hear like you got to treat turkey hunting like elk hunting. I just... That's why I was here. The, the risk, the, the I don't know. The risk, the risk reward to reward. me on on, totally on, on turkeys is is just I agree. Is, you know, is, is is not that there. If I was that close and it was an elk and they went over the side, I'd be going, okay, now what do we got to do to Jim? It was a giant eight hundred pound animal. Get, a, get a, you know get around yeah. the other side or something like that. But turkeys, I'm going, yeah, it's kind of a lot of dew on the ground and yep. they're getting damp and. Yeah. And, uh, See, I think I think there's your difference. I I was listening yeah. to some some podcasts of of some of the guys who are really into people are crazy and about that, hunting. They have the mentality of the elk, where when they go off the other direction, they will figure out how to circle around and call them back and try to get back on them. Yeah, and and see, to me, I guess the only, the only way I really want to kill a turkey is if I set up, I put the decoy out, and he comes to my spot, and I kill it. To me, it, 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 if I was hunting with a gun, and, and the turkey went and he and he went over a little rise, and I saw him and I snuck out of my blind and I went over and popped over the rise and shot him, I, I would say th- that was a waste of time, you know. The the you know, or I spotted them from a distance and they went over and they and they and they dropped down in a creek and I went over, I ambushed and come over and came over the top and boom, picked out of the tom and shot him. 
I would say that was a waste. Now, why is that a waste as what? opposed to any other animal that you would do? Yeah, that what on? part would be the waste? <laughs> the part be, because to me, and this is just a, to me, not to anybody else, but to me, shooting a turkey is about coming in, having him fan and strut around and pivot around your your decoy a number of times and sit there in full strut and 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 you did it right so mark's there to be provoked and and, he wants to be turned on and you put it but but he wants to be seduced by the turkeys but 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 if you but if you've got to um you know but now this can go for for any time of day you can choose it you can say all right you know i'm I'm hearing gobbling off over here and i'm going to go set up here real quick pop up everything and set up everything and 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 call and do it that's fine but you know to do the whole ambush, I saw him go over. The, you know the run and gun thing. Yeah. You know for for a turkey. Even though if I was calling an elk and 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 he you know he came in and he veered off the side and then he went over you know to the you know on the other side of the drainage, I'd be up there you know piling, sneaking over there and you know put an arrow in him and I'd be yeah game on. I just freaking kicked it. At, you know yeah. that 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 was awesome. I guess smoking a turkey with a smoke pole doing that you know we'll do it and then and just popping up and shooting one with a bow i guess i don't know it's just it's just it doesn't do it for you it just doesn't do it for me it doesn't do for you it's it's just personally my turkey hunting i've i've gone a couple times but where i killed the turkey um (laughs) it was probably the most amazing turkey hunt of all time now that I've turkey on a few times and talked to a few people, not really the way it goes. So um, I was in a creek bottom. It was somewhere around Jackson, mm-hmm. I think, somewhere around Jackson, California. Sure. And um, I, uh, you know, waited till the till it was just light outside, or whatever. And turkeys were roosting pretty close by, and they basically just flew right down on top of me. And there's turkeys flying this <laughs> way, and turkeys flying. Away. Holy crap. This is what it's like. Yeah. Just swooping all over the place. And I'm out there with my decoy on the front of my bow. I had it on the front uh-huh. of my bow, right? And they were coming in like this, you know, and then they'd veer this way and go this way right. and everything else. I'm like, gosh dang it, you know, like come on in and give me a shot, or whatever. So I go by this um uh log pile of you know, somebody cut some wood or whatever. And there's a bunch of turkeys on the other side of that. And I just come around the corner with my little decoy. And they're out there and they see me. And they start, you know, fanning right. and moving around. And I just get closer to them. And I'm like, I'm like this on the ground. You right. know, basically I'm like walking like this kind of a thing. And um, I got to, I was probably still 40 yards. But I knew this Tom was a really good Tom. And he just had his butthole facing me. And I shot him right in the butthole. And actually, I had it on my GoPro. It was awesome. Freaking mm. smoked him, and then I just ran after him, and he was still alive. And I picked <laughs> him up by his neck, and he died yeah. right there. And really? I was like, and then my friend comes up, and he's like, uh, he looks at him, he goes, dude, you just shot. Like, I've been hunting turkeys for, you know, however long, and you just shot like, you're never going to shoot a bigger turkey. So I don't think I've ever turkey hunted after that. I went a couple times before that, and, and I actually got close. It's exciting because I think all hunting – all hunting is pretty much exciting once you're actually doing it. Yeah. But when I'm at home, I don't get excited about turkey hunting yeah. or waterfall hunting. That's how I feel about it. I like it when I'm doing it. Right. Get me out there doing it, but I just don't. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me 30 seconds. Your best elk hunting experience. Man. Um, I've had some amazing elk hunting experiences, but it's got to be the, I killed the, of course, when I killed the six by seven, uh, three, I don't know what he scored, three, three something, way over 300, and um, spot and stalk snuck in on him. I I had called, you know, probably an eighth of a mile away, heard a bunch of bulls going off, and he just wouldn't show up, so I snuck in on him, uh, filmed the whole thing. Um, that's kind of what started my YouTube mm-hmm. thing was, was filming that. And I shot him at 25 yards and he went 75 yards and I had no idea how big he was. So I walked up I to him, him and he's a six by seven and you know, a, a true, true trophy bull. Yeah. In public land. Yeah. 
Awesome. It was amazing. And it was with, so my, my dad had died of cancer and, uh, I, I used his bow. He'd always mm. wanted to go elk hunting. Mm -hmm. He never, never went elk hunting for, he just was obsessed with white tails, but he wanted to go elk hunting. So, uh, I used his bow and, and set it up and killed that elk with that bow. Cool. That crazy experience. That is crazy. Yeah. That was, but, but I've had some, God, elk hunting is, you know, you know how elk hunting is. Yeah. But that, that's that got to be number one for sure. Yeah. Well, hashtag, what the heck did I just listen to? Thank you guys very much for if listening. Can, if you can fill 20 more seconds, you'll break three hours. Well, I will finish 20 more seconds, I'm sure. Um, hashtag, what the heck did I just listen to? We'd like to thank our sponsors, Les Schwab of Lodi, California, x Fowler Duck Blinds, Nimrod Outdoor Company. Uh, what else? We, we got Lodi Archery. Love to have them on. So thankful for them. They're really helping us get uh, set up. Um, and... Uh, uh, did I miss anyone else? Uh, and the community show. You can buy these now. You, you can shirts. buy go go to our go to our store. Buy hats. Buy shirts. Decals. Buy stickers. Buy decals. Buy calendars. You should buy a calendar quick because before you know it, the calendar is going to be Who's pretty obsolete. Is it like you guys? Is it, is yeah? It's Ryan us naked on each page. Not me. I had to take the pictures. Yeah. Okay. It, oh, it's only Mark. Charles on there. I don't think I. Yeah, Charles, you are. Was you I passed Char out? Was it? Yeah. Was yeah, you're on the actually, so anyways, You actually are on the calendar. Yeah. Of me so, anyways, the, so get get your get your community swag. The, the community show calendar is a calendar that features pictures that we yeah. took over the hunts yeah. throughout it, the it, year. It, so yeah, it, it picture it pictures you guys. We, yeah, you we've guys got, are in there. We we've, we've got all, all the people that we've had up all year and the experiences we've had all year, and I'm kind of I didn't proud know of that, that. calendar. And uh, would uh, like to share uh, more of it with you guys. That's cool. I didn't know that, actually. But um, thank you guys all very much for listening. Uh, this was a long-winded but uh, a lot of fun prod podcast. So if you guys are going for a long drive, um, I hope you got a chance to, uh, to take time to listen to it. And we thank you very much for listening. And we'll see you next time at Mark Cooper Outdoors Rock Podcast.